Greetings, my friends. And now, the grand finals! Which of these gallant challengers shall prove themselves most worthy? The Grime Street Grifters versus the Chillblade Crusaders! Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Hearthstone Invitational. If you love Hearthstone, make some noise. We're live from the Anaheim Convention Center at BlizzCon 2017. And after two days of action, it all comes down to this. I'm TJ, joined by the Admiral. That's admirable. How are you feeling about this grand final, Nathan? Well, you told me to make some noise, but I figured it would be bad to just shout over you in the meantime. Probably. So I'll do it now. Ah! <laughs> Thank you very much for that. Thank yeah, you very welcome. much. Uh, but yeah, these uh, these four teams now down to two have have played through some grueling Hearthstone. I don't think they were expecting the dungeon run earlier, where the Grime Street Grifters were able to make it through. The Chill Lake Crusaders they've been watching, they've been waiting all day, all weekend long since their second match win yesterday. They're ready to kick some butt. Yeah, it is quite surprising how seriously the players ended up taking this format. This isn't the Hearthstone Championship Tour. There's not a giant prize pool to compete for. They are playing for pride and for glory, and they have taken it so serious. The competitive uh, spirit is really what's been driving the players. That's right, and without further ado, let's go ahead and introduce our first team for the Grand Finals. Let's meet the Crusaders. Please raise a toast to our next challenger. The Chill Blade Crusaders! I'm Navi. I'm Dog. I'm Ardeo. And we are the Chill Blade Crusaders. <laughs> You're pausing. Are you gonna pause? I, I took a small one. <laughs> a little bit worried about the Chill Blade Crusaders. That team is probably the strongest team. Pretty worried about facing them. We are the Chill Blade Crusaders. <laughs> You I paused pause. last time, yeah, and then you did pause this time. But how do we synchronize after the pause? We, we just jump in. Alright, let's go. We are the, the Chill Break Crusaders! <laughs> the Chill Blade Crusaders! There they come out, the Chill Blade Crusaders. First seed after day one. Dog, RDU, and Naviu. Definitely the team to beat. And a team that a few of the cashers picked to win the whole thing at the very beginning. Four treasures for this team. Let's go ahead and send it to the stage with Brodan. Wow, we have a packed house here, dog, and I think a lot of people are also fans of your stream and what in your content. Uh, so how are you feeling right now? Do you feel a little bit nervous? Do you feel prepared? Or is it just another walk in the park for you? <laughs> uh, it's just another day, I guess. I'm, I'm kind of used to, you know, performing for large audiences and stuff. I've done a lot of tournaments, but I don't know, it's cool. I'm playing at BlizzCon, it's like super exciting, so there's a little bit of hype, you know? Well, you definitely sound excited. I think you're more chill than anything, and that's why we come to love Dog, for sure. Now, RDU, this has been a dream for you for several years. You're one step away, one series away. It's a best of 11, though, and I think you're used to these long endurance tests as well. So what, what preparation have you done personally, as well as the rest of the team? Uh, we just looked over the decks. We ordered the players in like the right way to maximize our chances of not getting eliminated fast. And uh, I think we're ready. Like uh, the other teams had a chance to beat us in best of three, they couldn't. Now in best of eleven, it's gonna be really very hard. All right. Well, Navi, I know you were very personally excited for this grand finals as well. If you win, is there anything special or something you want to say to the fans at all? Ah, uh, yeah. So uh, if we win today, Dog's actually gonna be giving out free hugs. So any uh, girls and uh, guys, of course, in the crowd, make sure you come say hi to him. I'm going to get in on some of that action as well. I'm, I'm kind of rooting for you guys now if we weren't already. Well, let's go ahead and meet their opponents, the Grime Street Grifters. Please raise a toast to our next challengers, the Grime Street Grifters. I'm Kronich. I'm Patra. And I'm Raynan. And we are the, the Grime, Grime Street, Street Grifters. Grifters. So we're straight out of Grime Street, so <laughs> that's cool. I want to win everything. I, like sort of like a perfectionist and just thought about bringing the best stuff and hoping to win it. I think we have like some kind of good teamwork. Kranich has been in two BlizzCons, so he's like a really strong competitive player. Uh, if this was a group project for school, I really think uh, Patra and I would be kind of like the nerdy kid that does the whole project for everybody basically. Kranich is just kind of riding the way of getting the easy A and that, that's, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> it's there for moral support, and that's really what matters. <laughs> we're the Grime Street Grifters, and we're grifting our way to the top. 
the Grime Street Grifters! And here they come, grifting their way to the main stage. Raynat, Kranich, and Patra. Kind of the misfit group, the misfit team here, but made it to the grand finals, just snuck their way in with the dungeon runs. So let's go down to Dan once again for some words with our second team. Kranich, you've been on the stage multiple times. In fact, almost every year since you've competed in Hearthstone. And now you're one step away from at least winning on the stage in BizCon and calling yourself the Invitational Champion. Uh, how much would the mean win to you? Well, this is the first time being as a finalist here. And also, I don't know, it's a bit, it, it's a bit casual, but like, I still want to win here a lot with, with my teammates. And it, would be, it would just mean a lot to me. Absolutely. And of course, uh, another Korean win at BlizzCon, right? Yeah, it just dominates. <laughs> All right, well, Patra, I think uh, you have a lot of fans out here. You've got the loudest cheers and people are holding up signs. Uh, how much does that mean to you, too? Because this is still a relatively new experience, at least competing on a stage this big. Yeah, it's my first time. I'm happy that some of my viewers are here. Thank you guys for supporting me. I hope I win this for you guys. Specifically for that person, he's a super fan. He's got the Patra punch. Now, Raynad, a little strong words come from the other team. They said that you couldn't even beat them in the best of three. How do you expect to face them in the best of 11? Any retorts to that? Well, best of threes are known as some of the most skill-intensive formats, so I can see, uh, I can see why they feel that way. But, uh, you know, we're confident we're going to play well. We're going to play our game, and I think we're going to get there. Constantly underestimated, but yet overcoming the odds. Let's go ahead and shake hands. And let's get this best of 11 grand finals underway. Bring honor and fame back to their inn. The Grind Street Grifters versus the Chill Blade Crusaders. Let's rock! All right, Admirable, it's time to get the Grand Finals underway. And that means we got to explain the format. So you heard the players in Frodan mention it's going to be a best of 11 but it's gonna be last year standing in a way that you may not be used to. Instead of the, the lives being attached to the deck, the lives are attached to the player. So the players are gonna play in order, and they have two lives. If they lose a game, that costs them a life. When a player loses their two lives, they are eliminated, and they have to leave the stage. It can no longer help their teammates. The team with the last player standing will be the Invitational Champion. That's right, and they are not only going to be playing in a single format as they're accustomed to, there's a little bit of a twist for this one as well. There is. You know how at the beginning of the, the round robin stage, we introduced three formats that they were going to be playing, Standard, Wild, and Excavated Treasures. Well, they're still going to be playing those three formats, but there's going to be a different way to decide each game what that format is. And admirable for a moment, I'd like to introduce something here to the caster desk. This oh. is my trusty chest. I was wondering why you've been carrying that around the whole week. That's right, Admirable. And inside my trusty chest, I hold envelopes. Take a gander. These are envelopes. That's at least four. At least four. Yeah. Up to a maximum of 11, somewhere between there. Inside of these envelopes contains a format, one between standard, wild, and excavated treasures. They're randomly chosen and put into this chest. Before each game, we will reach into this chest and grab an envelope. Whatever format is on that piece of paper in that envelope, that is the format that these players will play for that game. So without further ado, Admirable, I believe it's time to introduce the first format. Envelope. Do the honors. Thank you very much. That means the first format will be Wild. Yeah, buddy. I love Wild. Wild is one of my favorite formats because it is so undiscovered and unexplored that there are just a ton of decks that you can build this format. There's all sorts of crazy combo decks. There's incredibly strong aggro decks. And if you can manage to seize control of the board, there's usually a way to keep control of the board when that's the case. Yeah, that's right. And of course, I mentioned they are going to have a specific play order for, the, for this matchup, which means that they'll rotate through each player until, of course, the player is eliminated. Then it'll just rotate through the remaining players. 
so they'll all get a chance to play. And again, each round, they'll have to play a different format, one that we choose out of my trusty chest. And it looks like it is just about time for the first match. You can see the players strategizing, getting ready. Chillblade Crusaders, Grime Street Grifters. And it looks like we're going to have a Mage Mirror to start things oh. off. And both of these teams decided to play Freeze Mage as their wild deck. And you might recognize that mad scientist on the top side of things. That is what made this deck extraordinarily powerful uh, in its earliest creation. The grab a secret and play it immediately on the death rattle of that. It can chip away for some damage as well. That's yeah. not something that is irrelevant to the matchup. Uh, in this particular matchup, though, Alex Straza is an incredibly important card. Their goal is to do one of two things. Number one, set their opponents to 15 and then deliver uh, the damage to kill the opponent afterwards. Or number two is to hope that that's your opponent's game plan. And after they've exhausted their resources, you use Alex Straza to heal yourself up outside of the remaining damage that the opponent has left. That's right. And the mirror matchup is uh, quite interesting like with uh, Freeze Mage versus Freeze Mage. Uh, there's a lot of things that can happen with uh, offensive Alex Drazas and defensive Alex Drazas. It can be quite tough. Emperor Thorson. Emperor Thorson picked up. I'm actually curious to see if these guys are already formulating a game plan. So let's go ahead and take a listen in to the Chill Blade Crusaders to see what they're talking about in these crucial early turns. Answer the Emperor. That's like the other yeah, one that would yeah, beat yeah. us. Like if they stick an Emperor. So. so they they do they run Tony? They don't, right? No, no they don't. They don't. No list run Tony. No, we have exactly the same list. They have two acolytes. We yeah. And we have one volley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Oh my gosh, you're so good. Yeah, it should be very yep. hard to lose from this spot. Like we know they don't have scientists because if they had, they would have played it on two. Yeah, they would have played it. No, they have okay, it. they did it. Value trade. They did it from novice, right? So yeah. do we just value trade? Mm, we can full clear, but uh, we probably want to save the delay for burn. I mean, yeah. you don't really want to proc barriers in this matchup. No. Uh, yeah, if you, if you trade into like Dark Scientist... I think we just value trade for Scientist. Sure. Wait, isn't it better to trade? Because if we trade, we get uh, secret, they will never attack us. That's if we, true. If we like trade into the Scientist as well, they might be holding like... They might have like mm. one block in there. Uh, there's like a way... Basically, like if we trade into the Scientist, we can kind of manipulate their hand to the point where they can't pull they can't. like... The yeah, secret yeah. they want, like they could play a barrier, trade sinus to guarantee pool block. Yeah, I agree. And I, agree. Hold second I, block. I think just uh, trading yeah, yeah. is fine, and we don't take chip damage, which is yeah. not very relevant. But it's yeah, they're never gonna attack our face now, so that's good. That's Check what we got. Okay. Um, because this way, like they could have pulled a, a barrier, and they could have had. Yeah. A we have the like option of playing acolyte. Um, if we play intellect now, we go to seven cards. Next turn, we go to eight. If we play Acolyte and ping it, if we go to 8 again, they can make us overdraw if they kill it. If, if we plan on going Intellect into Acolyte ping, they'll make us overdraw a card. But I don't think I care. We already have Alex. Uh, yeah, probably Emperor. Emperor is the most important one, but... All right. I like Acolyte and then trade in. The problem right, with just... Acolyte is they can Forgotten Torch and we're denied a card. Yeah, if you just acolyte ping, then you just guarantee two or more cards. So yeah. Actually, I Ice Block is the one we don't want to burn, but... Um, yeah, I, I like playing Intellect, I think. Yeah, I yeah. Think it, AI, AI, AI here, I guess. Um, we got a lot of burn here. Yeah, sure. Yeah, we can pass. I don't even trade in? No. Yeah, okay. just, well, yeah, trade in, actually. Trade, trade in. Trade in. Yeah, yeah. They're just ping. Yeah. Okay. I don't... Yeah, a couple of crucial things there, not attacking into ice barriers. Lots of secret play early on. That's, that's one of the, the keys to uh, this matchup in general, is making sure that you get maximum value out of secrets and not proccing your opponent's secrets and making sure you get those reads correct. Yeah, in the standard Freeze Mage list right now, you do quite a bit of attacking. You have Arcanologists, you have Manise Valets, you have Mana Worms. You, you will basically attack your opponent at some point, and uh, Firelands Portal is also a big nod to that. So chewing through an ice barrier is an important thing. In this matchup, however, they're quite limited on minions. So activating your opponent's ice barrier oftentimes will just give them six additional life that Alex doesn't actually touch yeah. in that instance. And so it's a pretty important goal for both teams to simply avoid that situation. Yeah, I think the big thing here is recognizing, you know, when you're the aggressor and when you have to sort of be the player that's playing on defense. If you get Alex Strauss at first, a lot of the times you don't have the liberty of being able to just follow up with an Alex Strauss on your opponent because they're going to have that advantage. They can pop your block first and then go that way. Sometimes you have to play defensive and maybe save that Alex Straza for a defensive Alex Straza and try and burn your opponent out. Yeah, it's something really important to note uh, for Chillblade Crusaders is they have an additional card of burn. 
inside their deck with the Medivh's Valet. It's not a huge deal, but when you're talking about this matchup, a lot of times it boils down to how you can dedicate your damage to actually kill your opponent. In Grime Street Grifter's deck, that extra burn spell is instead an extra Acolyte of Pain. So if it comes down to a defensive Alex Strauza position, I think that gives the advantage to Chillbed Crusaders. They're going to draw just a few less cards, and they're going to have that little bit of extra burn to get the job done. Yeah, that's right. And now we're starting to get to some crucial turns, so I'd like to go and listen into the Grime Street Grifters now. A lot of burn in their hand. Let's see how they want to deal with it. Yeah. So basic playing is that uh, we play Doomsayer right before they're playing Alex, and then we just Alex first. Yeah, it only works if they don't have this card. Yeah. But then they had this card. Blood Mage is like the best draw, I think. Interesting. Um, maybe we just play that guy. Let's think about this. We're it makes sitting, sense. Yeah, it makes sense. We're sitting on 15 points without him, right? We have a. This is a really good point because like we can just pop them at one with these cards, like 11 and yeah. 14 and hero power, then you just play... Um, Cobalt. Uh, Cobalt and like just... Torch. Yeah. Torch, yeah. Yeah, this, this yeah. seems really good. Let's do it now. Wait, like, uh, what, what do we actually play? Like, the Frostbolt and Torch? Because, like, Torch is like, you're you're gonna draw another five, three mana fiber, but, like, does it make... I think we want more burn, yeah. Um, yeah, okay, okay. It's just Torch. It makes... Um, it just makes to yeah. us have more chance to get fireball. It's better. To, yeah, it's better to have cheap spells if we drop blood mage too, yep. potentially. So now he has a mana Alex. Uh, well, like this guy is really um, annoying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he has to spend mana dealing with it. Because like they can they can, they can actually coin Alex, then we will just um, burn him out probably. He just don't know like what he get, what what we get. So sure, they have to deal with it now. Now they they can't coin Alex. Oh. Oh, they're still gonna do it. Oh, they Alex. Yeah, they emperor. So yeah, their draw could not have possibly been better. That sucks. Okay. Well. We have to. Oh man. It's really awkward. It we can is. ice lance double doomsayer. I think it's the best play we have. Yeah. Too bad we don't have Nova. We could also have Frostbolt double Doomsayer. Because Ice Lance deals more damage. So what do we do? Like actually we're gonna Alex them next turn? Well, there's another way to play this game where you play like for value. Yeah, uh, yeah. So what I'm what I'm talking about is We're gonna lose to fatigue yeah. right now. What am I what am I thinking about is that like we just play some burns here and then play Doomsayer. I mean, like, uh, just... Uh, Frostbolt, Ice Lance. Yeah, using uh, this spell power at this turn, and then, like, we just heal, heal ourselves, but, like... Okay, Frostbolt, double Doomsayer. You're saying you want to use all your spells on his face right now. Yeah, but, like, just, oh. just for... Okay, okay, first. so okay. I'm, I'm down for that. So Frostbolt, his guy, I think. Which one? This one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then do double Doomsayer. Yeah, double Doomsayer, yeah. Let's do this. Yeah, that's uh, better. Ping, ping, ping. him. Yeah. Yeah, that's what, yeah, that's what I want, yeah. Or uh, we, could, we could just kill Alex here, but like... It, it'll die. He can't kill two Doomsayers. Yeah. Ooh. Something important to note about that uh, value game plan is that when this matchup was uh, popular, when Mad Scientist was in standard, antique heal bots were found in the decks as well uh, to, to have that defensive measure uh, to go against that burn plan. Uh, neither of these decks have antique heal bots, no. so the value plan is much, much tougher and more reliant on you actually connecting with an Alex Strauss at some point during that. Yeah, it's, it's quite tough. Being pushed into a really awkward spot here because of that Emperor Thorson into Alex Strauss. Yeah, as Raynad said, they literally had the perfect cards. <laughs> it, it was quite perfect, <laughs> it I will was admit. Pretty good. It was pretty good. They are going to be able to pop the ice block here, uh, which is going to be a pretty big Excuse deal. Grime Street Grifters me. does have a second ice block in their hand, but they're playing such on the back foot now it's very unlikely that they're going to be able to come back in the game. They have to find a turn to Alex their opponent while developing an ice block, and then finding a turn to kill their opponent before their ice block is popped. I think this is a defensive Alex Strauza. I think that their plan needs to be connect with yeah. Alex Strauza. That's, that's about all they can do. They are an ice block behind. They just have to hope that they get the card advantage. But let's go now and listen back into the Grime Street Grifters 
and uh, get a little bit of insight into what they're trying to plan for this coming turn. But yeah, I mean, the thing about the thing about playing Ice Block later is it's just not going to do anything once we're in fatigue. So I kind of like playing it now. Um, yeah, but like we just still have well, enough cards, so I don't know. It's uh, just going to come down to like how much actual burn do we have in our decks. I, I want to make sure we get value out of Ice Block because otherwise they're gonna they're just gonna put us at a low life total and then the game's gonna draw out and they're yeah. gonna, we're never gonna get value out of it. So, so. We're, we're we're gonna actually do like um, Ice Block Pink Face. That's yeah. what I think. Yeah, That's yeah, all. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I thought about Alex first, but then that's just. That's just bad. They know we have Alex because they know we kept a card and we haven't played it yet. So. I, I do agree that this turn is quite bad, but... They're going to have to defensive Alex right yeah, here. They, they are going to have to. What, what Brandon is trying to say is they want to draw more burn uh, out of the Kill Blade Crusaders before they play the defensive Alex Straza. Yeah. Um, just to try and get the heat away from their face a little bit because now that this burn is sort of wasted, when defensive Alex comes down, then they're going to be able to hopefully, you know, theoretically with Rain Nats plan, block some of the additional burn. Forgotten Torch was a uh, pretty prime draw there for Chill Blade Crusaders as well. Adds extra burn to the deck, gets the job done. Yeah. They get to keep the Ice Lance to go with the Frost Bolt. So if they see that defensive Alex Straza, they have a little bit of extra burn. And with Ice Barrier up, with uh, no effect from Grime Street Grifters to reduce their life total to 15, they are very comfortable with the amount of time they have. Yeah, it's very true. And most likely Defensive Alex here. Let's see what Chill Blade Crusaders are talking about. See if they have the read that Defensive Alex is on its way. With the Emperor, like obviously you can kill them in one turn. Like now with sure Emperor not. when you I'm coin. pretty sure not having coin is better. No, having, having coin with like Lances and Emperor is better. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I always thought it was the other way around. I thought you, because you, you can get Emperor first down without coin, and then you can get Alex. So I you're mean, always the first to get Emperor down, right? And you're always the first uh, to get Alex down. Not necessarily. Down. Well, you're not always the first to get oh, Alex I mean, down. Yeah, you, I see, yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fine. All right. So, how uh, much damage is that? I think it's lethal. Yeah, it's lethal. All right. Nice. <laughs> That's a cute one. The tilt. Uh. Okay, so Patra only has one life left. That's nice. Yeah, yeah. And the thing is that Navi has the best deck, so we have like a big chest. Ah, the classic debate <laughs> of whether it's better to go first or second <laughs> while you're in a match that determines whether or not you will win the grand finals. Yeah. It didn't even seem like they were paying attention to the game. They saw Alex, they're like, that's fine. Oh, that's lethal. Uh, pretty, uh, seemed like a pretty simple and straightforward game for them. And then you can see Pathor has lost one of her lives. She won't play for two more games, but if she loses again in that, in that game number four, she will have to leave the stage and will no longer be able to help her teammates. So uh, that's a, a pretty big deal. And you could hear RDU talking about that in their comms at the very end of that one. Yeah, and Pathor was the player that went 3-0 as the pilot for yep. Grime Street Grifters. So uh, the best performing player thus far. Yeah, the best performing decks. Half gone. Yeah. But we'll, we'll have to see. Anything can happen, and it's time to reach back into my trusty chest. Woohoo! Let's see what's inside the box. What's inside the box? We got an envelope. Can you check this for authenticity, Admirable? Yeah, it's real. Okay. The next format will be Excavated Treasures. My favorite format, actually, because it involved the most deck building uh, among these players. Uh, you know, we gave them a challenge with Excavated Treasures. They got a pre-built built deck of between 10 to 15 cards for each of the classes, and they had to fill those decks uh, with cards without using duplicates. Yeah, thematic shells is what they ended up having for these situations. Uh, Rayned is on Priest for this one, and when they built these decks, they could not include duplicate versions of cards as they were building them. So Raynad chose Priest for this and went with uh, the Shadow Reaper, Anduin, Raza combination to really have significant yeah. endgame combo potential. On Dog's side, he went with Paladin, and it has quite an interesting look to it. Um, but again, without the, the duplicates that really go into it, Reno Jackson has been such a, a powerful card in this particular uh, format. Yeah. 
We'll see, though. This one's quite tough. Crime Street Grifters, it'll be Raynad. He's he's the pilot for them. Of course, as you mentioned, Dog for the Chillblade Crusaders. Yeah, you look at the shell for Paladin, and it's a lot of Divine Shield-themed cards. Yes. Uh, Selfless Hero, Archer Protector, Hog, uh, Hammer, Don't Rally forget Blade. about the uh, Cobalt Guardian as well. Ah, yes, Cobalt Guardian. A, a really big part of that. Dr. Oh, Boom oh, oh. gets stolen. And something something a lot of the teams did with, with these shells is they had different directions to go. Did they want to build synergy into their deck, or did they just want to play a lot of powerful cards? Yeah. Uh, a lot of teams chose to go with the powerful cards option. Uh, Dr. Boom was in none of the shells. Almost every single player included it because of just how strong it is on its own. Yeah. Seal of Champions. Onto a silver hand recruit. Pretty good. Four attack minion. That's the bane of priest. Let's go and listen into Grime Street Grifters now as they're staring at their doom. But well, like, we don't we don't really have any play stand. Yeah. yeah. It's the only play. So huh? you agree, right? Yeah, yeah. I agree. It's only one card in their deck that deals with this. Okay, so they have uh, it. Oh, they have it. Yeah, they look happy. That's really unfortunate. That's a one in thirty. Well, Hopefully we mind games are Tyrion. The light dims, oh. But we no, they have. There might be something. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, rallying blade. My bad, my bad. I forgot about that. I mean, it's still the same play we have to make either way. Yep. We have no options. Yeah, we didn't have any options. Just hey, a that's good, a good pickup. Good draw, so mind game here? Yeah. Tyrion? Oh. We take those. That's it's fine. decent. Yeah. Woo! Just a four mana pile to shredder. Yeah, they also had uh, Keeper Voldemon was the card that Reynard was referring to. Yeah. That took care of the uh, the Doomsayer in that spot, which shifted down to a 3 3. And the, the Rallying Blade, though, the additional power buff. Let me it's a big deal now, but the three damage from Rallying Blade was enough to take it out. Yeah, and Bolvar Fireblood. The new Bolvar. Gains attack every time Divine Shield is popped, so Chillblade Crusaders can actually make this uh, quite large if they want to. It actually pops, uh, get, gets the effect from its own Divine Shield as well. Oh! Infinite value. Destiny. But the thing is, they're taking a beat down. Well, now's, now's a really interesting turn, I think, from Grime Street Grifters. They have three different ways to go about this. The first one is they could use Faceless Manipulator to try to duplicate Bolvar uh, and hope something can happen there. Second option is to use uh, that six mana card on the far left, Embrace Darkness. Uh, it says at the start of your turn, you take control of the minion. Now, in a lot of situations, this is more like six mana select a minion because your opponent can trade it off or they can kill it themselves. That is not an option for Chillblade Crusaders in this spot. So Grime Street Grifters is going to take that minion. And this is the perfect time to do it because they have the life total. They could have Shadow Word Pain and just easy killed it, but that could be used later on. Yeah, and this is going to be a lot of damage. Uh, I'd like to go and listen in now to the Chillblade Crusaders to see what they're debating about on this turn with their six drops. Let me think. Heal up. We have Master. Oh, yeah, we probably just more boom. Damage. With Master, it's lethal, right? Or is it one No, off? it's not. It's no, one, one off. off. Okay. But we just go boom. Yeah, go, yeah. go. Steed on the tutu. It's very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so that's sick. That's like our best draw. I'm pretty, I sure. Do, I think I'm so a, I'm pretty sure. That or Master Jowl Street, but that was kind of good. Yeah, it's good that this minion cannot attack now. It's like useless. Man, this this little silver hand, he's getting in dude, there. Get, he's getting it? in there. Oh I, don't, I don't even think they have a taunt. Taunt? A taunt. Uh, yeah. They don't play any taunt. <laughs> no, but seriously, guys, this looks good. <laughs> we even have lethal outs. I'm pretty sure we have something in the deck that is low damage. Oh, uh, we have Conk. Conk, Conk yeah. Uh, we have some other things too. I think we have uh, Fire Lord, right? Ooh. Do you want to attack? No, no, no it's, just, it's. Oh, we can't. Yeah, 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 that's right, that's right. That card's real good. It, it'll just grow like. A lot against attack. their deck, yeah. Yeah, attack with Fire 2, then like it gets more attacks, and then uh, we Reno next. But he has Doctor Boom, but I don't know. Probably if. You, well, probably it feels like it's awkward. Mm. Well, that seems like that's something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does not, and he does not attack, probably. Really? Uh, this seems bad. Wait, what? 
Yeah. Oh, it's a friendly, friendly minion. minion. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, okay. We are dead unless we reno. So. Right. What we can do is actually um, pain and pain the Stegoron and then Raza, but like it's. Pretty, we die. Yeah, it's pretty dangerous. Oh, well, because we attack the 5 2. Or, like, anyways, we can just um, trade and see what we, what we get here. I mean, I think we make that attack every time, yep. so let's see. Oh. oh. Right. Yeah, they know they know we had a reaction. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> they, have, like, they should they, they, they should know. All right, uh, so All right, so we, we have, play Reno? Yeah. Yeah. Let's play the one that we just got so they don't know about the other one we have. Sure. Actually, sure. no, they won't guess. They won't But like Yeah, they, they won't know. I mean, they might guess. I, I don't know which one's better to play. Just play the I one, we, play the one we already have. Yeah. Yep. I agree. Cuz if we play the other one, they know 100% that we have the second, whereas this way, uh -huh. they don't know 100%. I don't know, only if we get, we get some AoEs, then like, we can stabilize here. Yeah, we only really have Light Bomb, and uh, I mean... Mm. So boom, boom should go into the 2-6. Mm. Do we want to clear? I think we want to clear one. I'm pretty sure we need to clear one. What with, do you think? With what? I kind of wanted to kill the Boulevard, but I think Reno's more correct because we can go 5-2 uh, into it and then trade a 1-1 one, one and then get the minibot um, bounce. What do you guys think? Or do you just not want to clear? Go face. I don't know, dude. It's tough. Like, if we have, we think they have, like, Tyrion or something. Right? I think it's fine to kill the Reno. Kill the Reno. So, yeah, boom into the 2-6. Let's play this stuff first, so. It feels bad not sending boom at face. Wait, yeah, do, okay. do we want right, to play yeah, it? Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Don't no, we do. We, we, we play it to Arduin. No, it's fine. It's fine. It's, we we can't beat it. it. We can't yeah, beat yeah, it. Yeah, we have to play it. All right. Okay. So, I, I'm pretty sure we killed the Reno, yeah? Yeah, so boom into that. Yeah, yeah. We killed the Reno. Yeah. Boom bot. We're not playing zombie, yeah? No. No, no, no. It's good. Yeah, just go full face. All right, so we're showing 13. Do we have Silas in this deck? We don't, right? No, no, no. If they have. Oh boy, two Renos. How can there be two Renos in the world? <laughs> well, how can, it doesn't make sense that you get to heal. Dex not supposed to have duplicates. Remaining. Ah, that's right. Yeah. When he plays, it all of a sudden triggers. Now you could kidding. technically have you know 14 duplicates, and then Reno and another legendary just have to draw those 14 cards first. That's right. But yeah. Grabshoot Grifters were looking quite poor going into that last turn, but Faces Manipulator was able to buy them some time. We know well, Jackson no taunts in their deck though. <laughs> well, <laughs> there is. There's a lot of taunts in their own deck. <laughs> so, so that's the thing. This priest deck for Excavator Treasures is built around cards that steal your opponent's cards. Yeah. So they have Devour Mine. They have Thought Steal. That old buddy sitting in there, Archbishop Benedictus. Archbishop. Archbishop. <laughs> How many more ways can TJ say Archbishop? No way. No way. Nah, okay. nah Shadow okay. of Pain. <laughs> and uh, Ross of the Chain. So still a lot of gas left for Grime Street Grifters. And Chill Blade Crusaders now. Uh, they're starting to run out of gas themselves. There's a lot of gas left for Grime Street Grifters. I mean, the Pyros from the Pilot Shredder. Uh, the Reno Jackson to heal for full again. The Dr. Boom that they stole. Chill Blade's Crusaders, Reno Jackson, not nearly as good because they're the ones who are pressing the offense right yeah. now. And they're going to have to face down mind control in a couple turns. This could get ugly over the next couple of turns here. It really could. And uh, this could be a tough decision here with the trade. So let's go and listen in now to the Chill Blade Crusaders. See how they want to take this turn. Monster? No, right? No, we save it for Tarim. Okay, right. sure. Yeah, just, I, okay, so, yeah, do you want to play this tower or not? Uh, that's the only sketchy one. I'm not sure. I, I would play it. I would play it. Are, you, are we trading the Cobalt Guardian? Or is that going Actually, face? there's no point in playing Chow, right? I don't think so. Yeah, yeah, there's the no next point. Dominion. We're trading the Cobalt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're, yeah. Trading, we're trading everything. We're okay, full okay. trading. Yeah. I think that's right. I, I don't think we can go face at this point. Like, no, yeah, okay. I think I got Yeah, I'm done. Yeah. Ordering Craigasm. <laughs> <laughs> Rope every time. So we, we keep the chow if we need a uh, free free. Well, yeah. Uh, it's it's just that like Dragonfire kind of clears this. So uh, yeah, yeah. This is good. Uh, this is good against uh, Shadow Reaper as well. Oh, that was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that's a we, we cannot kill them either, right? That was spicy. No, no, we can't kill them. 10. Oh! <laughs> Yo, the force yeah. tank, though. Yeah. 
Um, it's a mech, it's a mech, we get Divine Shield. Yeah, we do. So oh, you, oh you my play god, that, that's, yeah. so, that's insane! So we get Divine Shield, we trade, we trade the 1-1 one, one, We trade then, everything. Yeah. We, we have to trade into all the boom bots. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah, so you go... Why? Wait, so why do we trade into the boom bots? Huh? Because I mean, otherwise... They they... Okay, guys, guys, guys. So, four stun max, 6 free into 7-7, seven, seven. One, 1 into uh, the boom to clear it. Yeah, yeah. and then we just... Push. Then, two, you, two. then you Higo power first, you go 2-2 two, two into the 1-1, one, right. one, and then you Reno into the 1-1. Yeah. One, one. Okay, okay. Because we, because they have Reno. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Yep. This is the Mind Vision's card as well, not the Oracle card. Yeah. Still, we trade. Yeah, yeah. we trade, we trade. Because yeah, yeah. Because the yeah, one? Divine Shield's actually really Yeah, you trade, you trade, yeah, you trade. Yeah, yeah, I just trade. Yeah. Okay. Damage to face is irrelevant, they have Reno. Oh, nice. Damage to face is irrelevant, they have Reno. I mean, it's not irrelevant. We have to kill them eventually, right? Like, Boombots are scary, TJ. They, they, yes, they are. It was headed towards that Cobalt, <laughs> and I was like, oh, he's done. What about nope. three Reno Jacksons? How about that? And uh, I was talking to Navi uh, yesterday, right after their matches, and I said, oh, did you guys have fun up on stage? And Navi said, yeah, it's really fun getting bossed around by RDU. <laughs> Which it effectively seems like that's what that team operates. RDU's <laughs> like, wait, 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 guys, guys, guys. Let's be real here. <laughs> Let's be real here. And he said he even bosses them around like outside of the game. They're like, oh, we want to go play in the demos. And RDU's like, no. <laughs> we got to be on stage in an hour and a half. Check in with me. <laughs> RDU's like the mom of the Chill Blade Crusaders. Our dad, you. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Grim Grim Shoot Grifters, Drum Kazakis, that's some of the only form of AoE that they actually have in this deck. Uh, Light Bomb is the other one, but that's about it. There's not much full clears going on. They do have an Excavated Evil, but that's a very small form of AoE. And that's a good one. Oh my! Seven extra health to the Doomsayer. The Force Tank Max is almost certainly attacking there. The Pyros now is the second one. Two Pyros, three Reno Jackson. That's a full house, Tej. So, so the big thing here for Grand Tree Grifters is just to live, because if they have, if Shield Blade Crusaders ever have a dead turn, they can capitalize. A six six, a ten ten. Heal to full, mind control your big dude. And with Chillblade, the fact that they've, this is the second Pyros they're seeing now, that Sunkeeper Tarum is almost never going to have aggressive potential. They know that there's, there's, there's a Reno Jackson in hand because of the convert. Yeah. They don't know about the second one, but they do know that there's two Pyros, and the Pyros eventually turn into 10 tens. They have to be able to combat that. This is a ton of pressure that's being put on Chillblade to fight this battle as effectively as possible. Yeah. I actually want to take a moment to listen to the Grime Street Grifters here and, and see what they're coming up with for a game plan as this one goes long. Uh, oh. I'm Maybe actually going to play on Hughes Minion or uh, Devour Mind. I like Pyros. If we play Pyros, though, he just kills it with that, and then we have to Devour Mind a Consecration or something. Maybe we just... Do we just beat Tyrion anyway? Do Maybe I'm too scared of Tyrion. Well, like, it depends, like, what he gets from Devour Mind, so... Honestly, I actually, I like Mind Control yeah, now. Yeah, me too. They, uh, they clearly don't have to. Last turn, yet. I didn't like it because they had so much attack. Uh-huh. Plus, so, like, plus a six attack guy that got shield. So, you Mind Control, the 7-7. Seven, seven. Yeah. Yeah. And then I think Value Trade, the 1-1. One, one. I agree, and then uh, Heal. Yeah, you think seem, Bump, maybe? This seems fine, yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe hitting Divine Shield's better? No, they play Quartermaster. They play Quartermaster. Yep. All right. Alright. So we're gonna kill one one and then heal. Wait, heal, no, you have to heal, heal, heal. I know. Heal. You bait it. You bait it. Okay. <laughs> that was scary. I too forget that it's free yeah. a lot of times. So the, the, the one thing that's funny is that these are giant touch screens. So you can see your teammate's hand moving towards the end turn <laughs> button. It actually takes like a few seconds to get all the way up there. Uh, so like, wait, 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 wait. Uh, but he debated us, us all. Mm. Till Lake Crusaders is. Reporting for duty. This is. I mean, they have to go here. Yeah. I said there wasn't much aggressive potential, but they are not going to have aggressive potential yeah. if they if they don't play Terran here. Yeah, they basically need to go for a push now it could be, because this is going to be their last push, and they might as well go for it before Grime Street Grifters find enough resources. And there is a lack of AOE. I talked about it. Reynad was saying that. If they go for a line of play where their board gets traded off, value traded off, the only way that they come back is a devour mine into a consecration because they don't have faith in drawing their own light bomb now that Kazakus is gone. Light bomb is, is the only AoE besides an excavated evil. That's the only. 
Only a couple things left in the deck that can clear out a wide board position. So Chillblade Crusader still has some game left. Two Renos, though. You got a lot of time. You have a ton of time. But if the board builds up big enough, you know, hold on. Maybe that time goes a, a, a little bit quicker. But let's go and listen in now. Chillblade Crusaders, they're operating on very little resources. Let's listen in. Uh, we like, never they, kill like, the Pyros. They, it's hard for them to do one Yeah, damage, yeah. Right? We're, like, we're going to trade the 3-3 three, three probably, but... Um, so then play the Honey Commander first and see what we get. But don't you want the Divine Shield on one of these? Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. No, but like, you don't want it on Silver Moon. Yeah. So do you just trade Silver Moon first? Oh, I guess it doesn't No, no, you, you just play Howling. Then it doesn't make a difference. Yeah, play yeah. Howling. Yeah, play Howling. Okay. If you want to ignore the 6-6, six, six, play Howling. Yeah. Do we punch face with the Light yeah. Justice? Okay. okay. Light nice. Justice face, right? Or do you want to get the no, card No, I would rather push um, it quick. Nah, yeah, yeah. Push it quick because we go I'm going to trade first that way we... It doesn't matter, actually, because we have all the ordering. Oh, wait, you should... It doesn't matter. So it's like this. It's hero power. I should like hero power first. No, you don't want to hero power first. Yeah, you don't want to... We're going to do this, yeah. 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 Full face. Yeah. Force them to reno. Yeah. Weapon face, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Okay. There's, I just wasn't sure if you wanted the one extra damage from the cock. Yeah, I still have the Pyrus, uh, Oracle card, this, and. This, an, this is like a really hard board to deal with. Yeah, for Priest. Yeah. They play the Kaz AoE. They, they uh, have Light Bomb and they have Light Bomb and Dragon Fire. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> maybe it's not so hard. But I think Reina was pretty salty. So how, like, do they deal, how do they deal with Tegan's weapon? That's my question, guys. Yeah, they, well, they have Reno, right? Like, no, but like, they have one Reno. They don't have more than one Reno. This is our second Reno. They only have one Reno. <laughs> I don't know. I think we yeah, have a chance. So we still have Ragnaros. We get the ordering, on the line, the ordering we get the was, weapon. The ordering was technically incorrect on this, but that's fine. It doesn't matter. Yeah. doesn't matter. Yeah. So, so they want you to attack into that one. Oh, so they, they might have, have Light Bomb. They might, yeah. No, no, they, this would be a Dragonfire attack, right? Mm. Light Bomb? Actually, no, 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 you're right, yeah. Maybe it is Light Bomb. So to play around Light Bomb, we did well to get the uh, Well, they're playing an awful lot around Dragonfire Potion. But <laughs> it's not in the deck. Yeah, that it, it's not. In, they did not include Dragonfire Potion. And the decks were revealed after the first round of play. After every team had played yesterday, since we were revealing decks on stream in order to keep the competitive integrity of the event, we revealed all the decks. The, the hours teams. and hours and hours that RDU has spent playing Standard has led him to this thinking that it is Priest, and therefore yeah. it has Dragonfire Potion. I mean, he's just run yeah. into that card, you know, hundreds and hundreds of times. And another thing to note is, Artie is pretty convinced that there is one Reno Jackson, <laughs> and it just came out. So they may play quite aggressive here onto this board. I, I think that's still the right call, though. Yeah. I don't really have much of an option other than to continue to play aggressively here. The, the board is, you know, hasn't been dealt with, and this is where uh, this board position thrives is you just get to push damage over and over and over again and your minions are dealing double, triple, quadruple yeah. damage. Yeah, and these expensive but infinite sort of tools that Grand Street Grifters have with a ton of Renos, uh, double Pyros, and very expensive cards like Archbishop ben Benedictus that aren't going to really be played are kind of working against them right now because they're not getting to the point where they can turn things around. But now staring at another big board Let's go and listen into the Grime Street Grifters to see if they have much hope left in this game. A freaking light bomb. Mm. Uh. Death. Okay, if we death the Tyrion. And then kill Sriwan and like and then Reno, Reno again. again. Nice. Well. Can we win a different way? If we... That might be the only play. That's 18. Yeah, they'll have 18 damage on board, so... I mean, with the weapon, inclu including yeah, the weapon. Yeah, they're going to have... Yeah. I think... Unless... I see that only as yeah, the, only the only play. Yeah, it's the only line. Yep. Oh, he don't. Oh my god. Oh, see, they do have another Reno. So <laughs> Matthew's right. The third Reno, like, what? All right, so we, we just punch that. it in the yeah. face, 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 face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, is there any way we can go all face? Uh. Because this has. Okay, so how much damage is this? Is uh, okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 12, 12. 18. 18? Yeah. Yeah. So if we go all face and we play Belcher Shredder. We only have... lose three damage, right? Because this has the bubble. Oh, no, they have. We lose oh, no. five. We lose. We don't really lose anything if we. Well, we lose the Belcher, so we do lose three. We lose two damage overall because yeah, they yeah. have AOE. Um, although it plays around Dragonfire a little bit better. Yeah. So it's up to you guys. I mean, I'm playing both of these no matter what, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. 
Shredder, I like Shredder Shredder the killing the Reno. Um, first of all, all of these go face. Yeah. Yeah. So let's just do that. We can evaluate. Um, I, think I, we I think we killed I, the Reno. I like healing the Reno. I think Reno we killed the Reno. What but wait think? a bit more. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know, dude. Because they're going to heal every turn. We need, to, we need to connect more mini damage. Okay. I, I just... Kill it, kill it. Yeah, yeah, yeah kill, kill it. Arena, I don't, kill I don't it. see there's We have time, kill it. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect piloted Shredder <laughs> positioning. Right in the middle. You should get that Dire Wolf Alpha or that Flame Tongue Totem. Now that Sludge Belch on the other hand. A little off. It's a taunt minion. It should be next to Dire Wolf Alpha or that Flame Tongue Totem. You're right. Misplay. But needed some ah, AoE here. There. Yeah, not picking Despite up much. Despite three Reno Jackson Chillblade Crusaders maintain board thanks to Sunkeeper Terra and deliver what seems to be an infinite amount of damage. Yeah, that was tough. And you could see Navi laughing because he knows that they had to deal about 80 points of damage that game in order to get it done. And a lot of it was dealt by the first Silverhand recruit that they played. That got buffed <laughs> up by Sealed Crusader. It is quite ridiculous. And there you can see now, Raynad has lost a life as well. Grime Street Grifters not looking good. And Chillblade Crusaders are continuing their dominance from yesterday. There's still plenty of play left, though. It's, it, you got to take six games in order to win the series. So still plenty more to come. Yeah. We'll see in a moment if Grime Street Grifters can come back in this grand finals. Don't go anywhere. Don't stray too far away from the fire, my friends. There's more tales to tell. The 2017 Hearthstone Invitational is brought to you in part by Republic of Gamers, Intel, T-Mobile, and NVIDIA. The 2017 Hearthstone Invitational is brought to you in part by Republic of Gamers, Intel, T-Mobile, and NVIDIA. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Hearthstone Invitational Grand Finals, live from BlizzCon 2017. Currently, the Chillblade Crusaders have a 2-0 lead over the Grime Street Grifters. And it's time to decide the format for game number three. 
Once again, I will open my trusty chest and I will take out an envelope and the envelope will tell us everything. And the format is standard. It's exactly what I expected. Standard. So standard, uh, that's what these guys are most used to. Yes. They've played a lot of Hearthstone. And most a lot of, of them. Of, yeah. And, and a lot of this, the competitive environment uh, takes place specifically in that format. Uh, this is where I would imagine Showblade Crusaders has a little bit of an edge. Uh, all three of these players are active in tournaments. RDU and Dog are used to the team format. They've been playing a lot of it lately. But Kranich, he has been to the World Championships at BlizzCon twice. And both of those times, it was standard. Yeah, he's played on this very stage, actually. This is the stage that was used for the World Championship in the past. We took out the big player booth and added these giant touchscreen monitors that the players are playing on. But it is the same stage. So we'll see if that experience is going to give him an edge if he can play well under pressure. But this is going to be Druid from Chillblade Crusaders, piloted by RDU. And the Pirate Warrior for Grime Street Grifters, piloted by Kranich. And, and there's something that's, that's pretty interesting to note here as well. RDU loves to play decks that have that next step style of feel where the metagame is headed. And Big Druid has been one of those decks that's been emerging in the format. A lot of times when you think of Druid in Standard, you think Jace. Play some large green mana and attack your opponent. This deck wants to ramp up the mana and just play the biggest, baddest bombs that are in the format. And when I say that, TJ, what I mean is that there are six 10 mana cards in RDU's deck. That's a lot. It is a, it is a ton. And Wild Growth is a big key to unlocking that because now he'll move into Myra Keeper next turn. But for Kranich, he loves to play aggressive decks. This is what he's done his entire career is take advantage of these bad boys. Yeah. And that South Sea Captain is going to get pressure underway. Yeah, but Chillblade Crusaders did have Wild Growth on turn two. So let's go and listen into the Grime Street Grifters so we can hear Raynad complain. I like attack. Oh, oh yeah, hitting for one? Hitting for one is fine. I think we're playing this on four. We're not going to play a new weapon for a while. OK. But if we draw an Arcanite Reaper, it's going to feel pretty bad. Let's yeah. just hit one, then. It's fine. So right. what are you going to face, actually? Um, they can play Jade Blossom. They Wrath like, Hero just... Power, probably. Uh, Meyer Keeper. Oh, no. Meyer yeah, Keeper, Meyer maybe. Keeper. Let's, uh, let's... I, I just hold I, one more. I, I, OK, OK, we'll wait. Yeah. We'll wait one more. I like hitting, but OK, uh, it's up to you guys. They're both good plays. I, I like hitting too, I honestly. I like hitting. I like hitting. We're, gonna, yeah, 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 we're sure. gonna draw another weapon. Sure, sure, sure. And uh, we'll just upgrade that weapon, not this. Yep. Every everything. Oh, they don't even have earthen scales. Uh, no, they have it. Thought they had two. Okay. So this should be. Um, yeah, frothing. Frothing, frothing yeah. here. Yeah, we, we got a really sick curve here. Yeah. So frothing. Uh, do it. Do it even matter like trend? Like one uh, we, we have to trade. Yeah, yeah, we do. I mean, like uh, the patches or like, the patches. Firstly, patches. He's okay. uglier. Yep. <laughs> Just don't really want to see him again. Yeah. Go oh. old face. Okay, what's their moon blade? Moon blade. Um. Getting one one. Yeah, I mean they they have a spreading plague. That's uh, Spring? a. Spring spreading plague is actually really annoying. Yeah, but like. Still, uh, it make this really big. Yeah, it's still, it's not like good for them, but it does buy them a lot of time, and it's a card yeah. they'll have to play this game to win. So, I mean, like if he gets like better board, then it's completely okay. So it's Malfurion on. Oh, that's so good. Oh, Are you kidding? What is it? They full mauled, and now. Okay. Well. I just want you guys to know they played turn two Wild Girl, turn three Mire Keeper. Turn four, Primordial Drake on a full mull. So we're, we're just. We um, trade the A drop, right? Or I mean the A attack guy. We have to. Yeah, training frothing. Yeah. I, I think mm -hmm. this is pretty fine. They just had no better place, so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're gonna play Naga. Naga. Yep. Yeah, I think we hold our weapon attack for a turn. Yep. Yeah, I agree. And just trade this one. Yeah. Frothing. Uh, getting some uh, damage. Yeah, we hold it because we yep. can upgrade and. Good upgrade in Naga Corsair or just Hydra. So, what are the other options like? Yeah. 
may have to play it. And we can use uh, Hearth and Skills. Doom Guild? There's no Doom card. Oh, oh, sick. oh good. that's pretty uh, good. That's pretty sick. It's a lot of health. Yeah. yeah, and we get the two on. Yeah, so they might have Bitter Tide. We'll see. Let's hope not. Man, that was a lot of armor. Jeez. So they kill our Illidan, they kill our 2-1, but then we can ship up our 3-1. We are behind, but uh, I don't not, know. Yeah, we have a lot of... If they don't have Bitter Tide, we're like, okay. We have big cards. Bitter Tide is the only card we can't beat. Kautus. Okay, we don't have Bitter Tide. Corsair? Corsair, wow. Well, they do have Bitter Tide, but they decide to go for something different this turn. And yeah. Jump like Sanders said, Bitter Tide's the card that they can't beat. Well, it's tough for them to beat this, too. I mean, this is actually more power on board. Yeah. And it gives a four power weapon another charge. This, I think this is quite superior. Um, Prime Street Grifters can rest assured that there is not another swipe in hand. However, second Primordial Drake uh, could be something that, that hits the captain, but there's still a ton of power on board if that happens. And they follow this up with Bitter Tide Hydra. It's a lot harder to use Bitter Tide Hydra by itself, and that's why they're isolating his last card in their hand. For Shield Blade Crusaders, their hand has been incredible, but the pirate pressure is a ton to deal with. We saw it in the, in the previous game. Repetitive damage is what ends up winning these matchups. Yeah, they're probably going to need a real Deathwing at some point to be competitive in this game because Deathwing Dragondor is not going to do it. No ramp currently in... They don't have a single playable card in their hand. Let's take a look at what the draw is. Uh oh. Well, that is quite perfect. I want to listen into the Grime Street Grifters now as they deal with the Lich King. So this is really important. Uh, I will think of Leroy. Definitely high trade. Um, hmm. Yeah, high draw every time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then we just get rid of our taunt and then our face. So we have nine damage and like um, eight, seventeen, and probably yeah, probably it's fine. Yeah, so I think I think we do get rid of the taunt. I mean, instead of getting rid of the taunt, we can get rid of the six five. Mm, I like keeping it. It's only gonna have five attack. Yeah, that's fine. And if we kill it off, yeah, because he gets to trade there. But if we we're going to have 5 attack, basically, on board. But if we trade off the Naga instead, we're going to have 7 attack left. But we missed 2 damage this turn. So we're going to trade this guy? Okay. I, think, I, think, I think it's better to trade the 4 guy. Yeah, we, yeah, sure. yeah. We basically, yeah. Um, we have 2 less attack on board, but we... Go face, yeah. We have so 2 less attack on board, but we basically gain... Face. Go face. Face, right. yeah. No, but yeah, the advantage is we get the 2 damage right now, so... It's like, it's this is better. I don't really know what he gets from... Oh, it's, it's, they're so close to getting past his help, but I, I'm not sure that actually quite stabilizes them They here. need another card after the Spreading Plague to be able to stabilize. Well, I'm, I'm guessing that Obliterate is probably getting used this turn. Trade, Spreading Plague, Obliterate, and just try and stabilize at a low life total? I, I think so. Uh, if, you, if they don't Obliterate this Bitter Tide Hydra, it will chew through the rest of Grime Street Grifter's board. Unless they are feeling some interesting scenario where maybe they want to leave the Bitter Tide Hydra, have the Spreading Plagues threaten the damage on the three points of return, mm. see if they can draw stuff to get out of it that way. Well, I'd like to hear from their thoughts. Let's go ahead and listen to the Chill Blade Crusaders and see how they want to plan ahead. Yeah. Like, I obliterate it. And then we obliterate it higher now. Oh, no. Okay, this is the, this is the best way. Yeah. Yeah, this, this is definitely the best. There's actually some merit in obliterating that. For the second captain? No, he's almost dead. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. So, so if, you, we, rip, you, you if we rip swipe, we push seven. You want to leave the Hydra up? Yeah, yeah, yeah I see, if I see we that. rip swipe, we push seven. Ah, uh, it's questionable. But Deathwing will probably end him anyways next turn, and yeah, we're yeah. relying on a top deck, so I think what we did was better. But, yeah, because, I mean, realistically, if he gets past the taunts, we lose anyways. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. Does Deathwing end them, though? Hmm? Do we I even have a taunt? I don't even know if we have any more taunt clubs. Um, yeah, I don't know either. Oh, that's yeah, that's really good. We have a uh, Malfurion. I think so, yeah, we just dead on board next turn. Yes, we are. Yeah. We are dead. Yeah, we are. We are. We are. Yeah, we are. Dead. No, we aren't. Yeah, we yeah, are. We if are, we play we Deathwing, are. we are. Yeah, yeah, we need to hear no. power. No! The Pyrus was attack. Yeah, but it, it just gets through Queen Oh, Blade, we need so to heal power. Three. We need to heal power, yeah. yeah. Okay, so we, we have the hero power. Yeah. So like, let's hope we draw something like is, UI. I don't, even, I don't even know. Oh, UI. UI. That's a good. Oh, they do the trade for us. They trade for us. Oh yeah, that's really good. Uh, wait, no, it's the same no, it's thing. The same it's the same thing, thing right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, swipe. Swipe it. Swipe. Yeah. 
<laughs> oh, I wonder if I wonder if we yeah, did if, the yeah, wrong Yeah, maybe thing. the Hydra line. Yeah, yeah. That's I wonder. Close, dude. That's interesting. That's close. All right, just UI, UI, Gaben, please. Oh, wait, no. <laughs> Gabe, right. what? Mike Morheim. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there oh, you Ben are. Brode. You nah, gotta, you Mike, gotta, dude. No, no, we need to go one step well, oh, okay, okay. You don't even know who's the right guard. I pray to Papa Brode. Whoa, my, this is close. It's kind of funny because Mike Morheim was sitting directly behind them for the beginning of this <laughs> match. <laughs> Street Grifters is one turn away. The Leroy in hand represents 10 damage. So even if Chillblade were to heal for one with the hero power here, it's not enough. And Chillblade Crusaders, they have to know that that card in hand is likely damage. Uh, I don't know. I, they might have to take the risk here and just go one turn where they get Deathwing. What but... wouldn't have been played, though? Uh, maybe an Arcanite Reaper? No, nah, they would have played that in hit, right? Maybe an Arcanite Reaper? I don't know. I feel like in their spot, even if they drew, there's only two cards that draw that are super beneficial. It's the second Spreading Plague, and it's Malfiri and the Pestilent. That, that is it. They don't have taunts. They don't have anything that can gain life without a minion on board. If they draw, it has to be one of those two. Yeah, they if they play the Deathwing Dragonlord, though, they need two turns to kill. They need two turns to kill, or it gives them something to trade into. Okay, they're going for Wild Growth. They're going for the Desperation play. See what they can pick up. Perfect card would be Malfurion the Pestilent for Chillblade Crusaders. Jade Blossom. Wow. Not enough despite the heavy ramp that they had, despite the spreading plague, despite the primordial Drake. None of it worked out. And Leroy Jenkins is going to put Grime Street Grifters first win on the board. That's a big win for them because if they fell down 0-3 after the first Ooh. round of play, and the BM, right, right they're back. still down in the series. Chillblade Crusaders threw it up first. And now Kranich is able to answer for the Grime Street Grifters. First team to take six wins takes the series. Yeah, and keep in mind also, if a player loses both of their lives, they are eliminated and have to leave the stage. So that's one life gone for RDU, who, as we've talked about, seems to be the leader for the Chillblade Crusaders. If they lose him, maybe they'll struggle a little bit more, but it's hard to tell. Yeah, he's going to take a sidestep for a moment while the other players step in, and a new format will be chosen for this. That's right. But Grab Street Grifters still have some work to do, still have a little bit of work to do. And you can see the crowd watching the stage. That's the trophy. That's what they're playing for. It's actually pretty sweet. And it's time to reach into my trusty chest once again to determine the format. The next format is Excavated Treasure. And I love Excavated Treasures. Me too. Once again, they have to build with a shell that, that was uh, previously determined uh, in yes. this. It's from that shell. Uh, they have to fill up the rest of the decks without using duplicate cards. So think Reno Jackson, think Kazakus, Mage, Warlock, Priest have been very sought after in this format. Yeah. Hey, Emerald, there was treasure in my chest. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Uh, but there's the rules for the excavated treasure format. It is wild, so all of the cards are available. The teams, as admirable mentioned, received partial decks for each class, somewhere between 10 and 15 cards. They then had to complete these decks with cards without using duplicates. So they all are Highlander decks. They all don't have more than a single copy of a card in them. So it was a pretty tough deck building challenge because we did make the shells quite tough. The Hunter shell, which both of these uh, players are playing, was basically secrets. If you go into your collection, go to the Hunter class and search secret, every single card that's had <laughs> secret on it was we put into the deck. So uh, uh, quite challenging. That's why you can see the secret keepers thrown in there by these teams and uh, some beasts throw it in there to try and supplement these Hunter packages. And they're pretty close to identical lists, uh, given the way they wanted to build those. Of course, they, they added a Quick Shot, very powerful card. Uh, they went with the early minions alongside with Glaive Zooka, great weapon, the, the days of Hunter Yore. The real big difference is when it comes to their endgame, where Grime Street Grifters in Patra's build, they chose to go with Bitter Tide Hydra and a Bone Mare to really supplement the endgame, where with Chillbitch Crusaders and Navi Uts deck, they chose to go with Barnes, and they chose to go with Reno Jackson. Quite bizarre. And uh, keep in mind for this one, this is a big one for Chillblade Crusaders to win because if they defeat Patra in this game, she will be eliminated. She lost her first 
a game on stage. So this is her second life that she's fighting with here. They want to eliminate one of the other team. That's what Chill Blake Crusaders has in their mind right now. Crime Street Grifters does not have a Reno Jackson, so this pressure will add up over time. And while it's just a Firefly, with no actual heal in their deck aside from the Deathstalker Rexar, which is providing six armor, that is about it for protecting themselves. Yeah, let's go ahead and listen in now to the Grime Street Grifters as they formulate a game plan for this Hunter Mirror. Uh, not really. We're going to take, like, yeah, probably yeah, four yeah, extra yeah. damage over the yeah. uh -huh. It's probably worth it for a weapon charge. Yeah, I agree, I agree. You just don't attack. All right, pass. Turn three, animal companion yeah. or huntress. Only if you get into later curves, like. Um, so now I just get rid of all the cheap stuff. Here's the so snipe, hero power. Snipe, hero power. And I think pop. we do attack a 1 2 now. Uh huh. Yeah, just kill one of the 1 2s. We have a lot of big minions coming up. Yep. Right. So yeah. we're gonna prevent them one, t uh, just for one turn, and then like low step into high man into yeah, boom. Let's kill that. Yeah, just kill it. They know it's not explosive now. But I would attack. I would attack. As well. I would attack. I would attack. Yeah. Okay, attack. Yeah. yeah, attack. One, two, into it. All right. We're not gonna play secrets, but yeah, it's Barnes. Uh, this snipe. like. Uh, it could be it doesn't snipe. matter. Yeah, it's probably snipe. Yeah, but it's we, fine. We don't it's care. Come on. He's not close on this because he cannot play the secrets. So it's fine. Ah, he's that's little. a low roll. He's little. Yeah, that is a low roll. No we sign. don't have any silence, right? Huh? Um, do we have silence? No. Okay, because if There's we have no silence... There's no way we could fit in it. Fit in. We want to load in a key turn. I mean, uh, next turn might just be secret keeper, explosive freezing, so we can get some more charges. Cause yeah, because I actually just want to start going yeah, twice in the yeah, same. Yeah. What are they going to trigger our stuff? Right. Oh. The early days of Boom before he got his PhD. <laughs> just a lowly 1-1. One, one. Yeah. But Chill Blake Crusader has just really interrupted their turn. They were hoping to get some secrets online <laughs> and be able to really start hitting face with the bow, as they mentioned. But they're just going to counter with their own Lothab. Not yeah. bad. And Mad Scientist, notice that despite the death rattle, the big impact of that card has been that it delivers two damage every single turn until your opponent kills it, where they get a benefit all of a sudden. <laughs> it's a very difficult menu to deal with, and the aggressive pressure from that card it isn't because you traded in a grab tempo, it's because turn after turn, it's two damage, two damage, two yeah. damage. And then when you finally kill it, it's just a big benefit. Yeah, and now, Grim Street Grifters play this high main, thinking that they're going to be pretty confident, oh but Freezing Trap is the bane of the high main. That's going to put it back in the hand, and while they will have Dr. Boom, they're taking a ton of damage in the meantime. That freezing trap. Yeah. Oh, my. Grime Street Grifter is under pressure, and I know that Raynette loves Huffer. Let's listen in and hear how they can come back from this. I think we, oh, man. We have, we have to attack with high main. We have no choice. If it's freezing trap, it's freezing trap. Like. So it should attack Huffer, right? I think so. Yeah. Oh, uh, damn. So now four. So we're going to kill 2-3 and then Putricide, I guess, or just... We have to play Putricide. It's the only way we win. Yes. Yeah, so and kill, kill Command. No, no, no. We, we, oh, like, we attack the 2-3 and then we play a secret off Putricide and get explosive. Yeah, yeah, it seems... Okay. We're just so far behind. We have to yeah, high roll. Yeah, just, just attack first. Attack first. With the weapon into the because yeah. of secret keeper. Yeah. And All right. Now we gotta get like the one in ten. Good news, everyone. I perfected the plague. That's yep. <laughs> and then play alley cat. Don't even look at it. Don't look at it. <laughs> alley cat, go. Alley cat. Yeah. We don't even know now. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Oh, well, that's unlucky. Oh. It's not explosive trap. I like how they just don't look at their secrets when they get them. Raina just encourages, no, don't look at it. It's like, what's inside the box? <laughs> if you look at it, the explosive trap goes away. <laughs> Becomes a hidden cache. 
Uh, but yeah, this one's looking quite grim. The one thing is that Chillblade Crusaders don't know what that secret is, because one was played and all of the secrets are in the deck, and then one was randomly generated, so they're both effectively randomly generated. Let's go ahead and listen to Chillblade Crusaders, see if they can navigate what the secret is. Yeah, because even if it's Snake, we, we can clear with the Yeah, it's just the guy. All right. Trading's fine. I agree. That's fine. Yeah. Snake, yeah. Okay, it's fine. This is okay. Yeah. Oh, it might be Bear. So we should attack with the Zionists first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Bear only goes wait. on face. Oh, oh, I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. No. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Should we... No, it's fine. Go Zionists okay, first. Go, 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 go. Yeah, yeah, Okay, face. Right. Attack face. Shoot. Yeah, even if he's Catholic, we don't care. Yeah. yeah, this is good, this is good. Miss lethal, LUL. Miss lethal. <laughs> Miss yeah, lethal. Chat is going to be spamming that pro player. <laughs> like <it goes. laughs> 11 plus 4. Yeah, yeah. Thinking? Uh, yeah. Uh. Jeez. Wait a minute here. Deathstalker Rexar gives them five extra health in this spot. It does. They're, they're clearing off the opposing board. Oh, no. They need those minions to survive the rag shot. They'd have to oh! not attack. Okay. <laughs> well, they're going to play it, but that will be the death of them. If they do. Secrets are tough to play around, too. I mean, they're hoping that the secret is something quite dead. Yeah. There, I mean, there's a lot of secrets in this deck. There's a ton of secrets. Literally all of the hunter secrets. Yes. And uh, that will clear off the board. And they're just staring at five damage. They think that they have one life left. Yeah, the only one I don't see is like the trap door secret when your opponent hero powers. Dark trap. Dark trap. That's the only one I don't see. Job done. Valiantly fought, but the Fire Lord himself gets the job done. Chillblade Crusaders takes game three, and that means Patra's second life has been lost. She will not be able to help the Grime Street Grifters for the remainder of the series. Lastest hero standing at the Invitational. And while Chillblade Crusader is just going to shuffle around a little bit, we will have to forcibly remove Patra from the stage. But this is a tough one. This is a really tough one. She's like, can I stay up here for a couple minutes longer? Nope, you can't. There it is. Two lives lost for Patra. Raynad and Kranich are going to have to carry Grime Street Grifters to the defeat. Good job done by Patra, though. She was the only <laughs> player to go 3-0 during that regular stage yeah. to get them to this grand final. Yeah. Uh, I guess all the Grime Street Grifters are taking a break, so we're going to go away for momentarily. Don't go anywhere. More Hearthstone Invitational right after this. Don't stray too far away from the fire, my friends. There's more tales to tell. It's Hearthstone at BlizzCon.
see, man. Ah! Oh, there it is. Oh, great. Anywho, why don't you just vanquish your foe? I can't just kill my boss, Gul'dan. They can if you do it righteously. Uther, there are no righteous kills. I've told you this. Ah, not with that attitude there is it. Just hear me out. You should really take a yoga class. You should take a... <clears throat> Anyone gonna call shotgun? Shotgun? What form of forbidden ritual is this? Is it some sort of dark bargain? Shotgun. Whoever says it first gets to sit in the front seat. This shotgun is evil, yes? I shall bend it to my will. You don't bend it. You just say it. So it's a spell! No. You literally just say the word shotgun, and whoever says that first gets to sit in the front. But what must we give in return? Everything. No, nothing. 100% risk-free. You just say it. You got a free ride to Pizza Palace, which I'm pretty sure closes in like six hours, so... I don't understand. Why use a spell if you get nothing? I just don't trust Shotgun. this! Shotgun! Oh, thank you. Get in the car. Did... Did you just see that? Okay. Where you guys want to eat? How about Solvafay? Again, that is not a real place. You just want to murder people. <laughs> We had pizza yesterday, so pizza? Mm. What about sushi? Mm. Shotgun! Luther gets it. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Hearthstone Invitational here at BlizzCon 2017. We're smack dab in the middle of the grand finals here between the Chill Blade Crusaders and the Grime Street Grifters. Patra, with her loss in game number four, has lost both of her lives in the grand finals and has been eliminated, which means she has been forced to leave the stage, leaving Raynad and Cranich as the only two members left in this last hero standing format. Shotgun! <laughs> hey, I got the front seat. <laughs> Perfect. Front seat at the casher desk but I got more pressing matters to attend to, Adverbal. It's time once again to reach into my trusty chest and determine the format for the next series. Okay. Or not. <laughs> it's impossible to get open. Uh, uh, Viney, uh, crazy, uh, uncontrollable. Wild. Ding. The format is wild. But just making sure it's wild. It's wild indeed. Every card now available to the teams when they were building their lists. However, uh, the lists can get quite aggressive as we move into this stage. Uh, some of the most powerful cards in Hearthstone have been the early minions and the amount of damage they can deal when they go unchecked. And that has been a favorite throughout this event so far. That's right. Oh, boy. We got ourselves a good old-fashioned aggro shaman mirror match. And this is this is quite a throwback. Uh, Tunnel Trogs, Totem Golems, even Crackle in the mix. And my gosh, is Chillblade's hand good. Yeah, let's go ahead and listen in to Grime Street Grifters. They're a player down. Let's hear how they want to handle the mulligan. Uh, this seems perfect. Just keep two one-drops. OK. And we have a good amount of weapons. Uh, yeah, bolt. OK. So if they go Trog, do we coin bolt it with the Trog, or do we just bolt, or do we... We don't Trog pass, because that's bad against Flamesong. We don't coin Rockbiter. So... You know, the, the only thing I don't like about Trog coin bolt is it's bad against Totem Golem. I feel like it would be fine, just... Bolt pass. And if they Totem Golem, we coin Crackle. That seems like too passive. Uh, I just like troll coin. All right. Yeah, I'm I down. Think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, I was leaning towards that play anyway. I just want to talk through all the other stuff. Let's just hope they don't have it. And if they have the best opener yeah, on the yeah, play, yeah. then we're dead. This one is just bad against, uh, only bad against Totem Golem. Yeah. So. 
Yeah, we can't beat that anyway. If they have like the best one drop, best two drop on the play, that's uh -huh. that wins the mirror. I chose as an answer. Yep. Alright. Yeah. Yeah, I go throw. Okay. It's rough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's fine. It's yeah, that's what we have. Jade Lightning. Yeah. And we have like uh, yeah, portals like patches, the early card. Sure. Yeah, we'll just portal after. Oh, they drew patches. That's fine. Yeah. That's not bad. I mean, it's like acceptable, you know. All right, power mix. Uh, yeah, power mix of course. Oof. The flame tanks are really Oof. strong, but not here. Just hero power. Yeah. yeah. Dog fans hate to see that. That passage draw was so costly for Grime Street Grifters. They needed one single turn to get past. <laughs> they, they, any other card in their deck, they would have been happy to see. Literally any other card. And a lot of times this matchup, even though it's quite aggressive, it doesn't always end very quickly. A, a lot of times what ends up happening is trade resources back and forth. Your cards match up fairly evenly. It's the team that can make the best use of their resources and have that last threat that ends up pulling ahead in the series. Yeah. And if this is a spell power totem roll, then Chillblade Crusaders will have a full board clear. Yeah, it's important to take care of totems over and over again due to the threat of Flame Tongue Totem. Uh, the threat of so many totems getting on board that eventually uh, your opponent has a big manipulation over the way the totems work. You know, they get the spell power and suddenly Maelstrom's wiping out more minions. Uh, you know, that gives your opponent an opportunity to taunt up turn after turn after turn so you can't direct your attacks as well. Yeah, this one may not be looking that good for Grime Street Grifters. They're drawing cards that are quite dead in their hand. They do have a lot of burst damage, though. But with Feral Spirits in the hand for Chillblade Crusaders, this is a big one. And keep in mind, Raynette did also lose his first game here in the Grand Finals, and he is the pilot for this game. So if he loses now, he would leave Kranich alone on the stage, fighting three players from Chillblade Crusaders. Pretty big draw. But this is the Flame Tongue turn. Yeah, let's... I want to go and listen to Chillblade Crusaders with Doomhammer drawn. Let's see if they're on the hit him in the face plan. Like, um, okay, yeah, I'd rather you, you the flame tongue, you bolt, you trade the two attack minion into their totem, and then you go face for the four. I think that's like the cleanest way to do it. Wait, what? We're gonna go put the flame tongue right here, right? Yes. Yeah, and then that trades bolt, trade that there, that yes. face. Yes, yes. Yeah? Nice. You like yep. it? Yep. Right. Nice yep. and clean. God. <laughs> I oh. like the way you do it. Yes, dude. Yeah, you have to yeah, do it yeah. like that, man. Oh my god. Dog. That's scary. Oh. There's touch screen. Go upstairs, dog. Yeah. Dome Hammer is also quite good. Dome Hammer is insane. It's like... Yeah, especially if you play when you're bored. Like, it's yeah. just like, GG. Man, that opener from that was scary, but then yeah, well, they just banned nothing. Yeah, I was a little bit scared, yeah, and then they don't follow up. Like, they'll, pro they'll probably have to, like, burn spell the Flame Tongue here, and then, I don't know. They probably have Lightning. Jade Lightning, yeah. Yeah, or Grackle, right? Yeah. Maybe Rock Biter, but Rock Biter is pretty bad right now. Rock Biter is... Uh, <laughs> what can they have that is good? I think Killing One Pharaoh seems fine. I feel like that's the only way. You just really need okay. to um, trade. So Feral, right? Yeah. Crackle, Feral. Right. We can also Rock Biter. That we can Rock Biter, Crackle next turn. Uh, that, seem, that seems good. Yeah, just you just. Rock Biter. Yeah, yeah, Rock Biter. These cars are like pretty much useless. Yep. Hammer. Yeah. I mean, uh, you why can, don't, why you don't can we just flame wreath and totem? That's yeah. fine. And trade. Why don't we just, uh, why don't okay. we just flame wreath yeah, trade? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You trade the flame tongue, right? Yeah. Huh? Oh, wait, you want to play flame tongue? No, we're not playing uh, the flame tongue. Uh, Are we? I mean, no, we might I, as well. I, know. Actually, I, like, no, yeah, I, like, I like flame wreath. Play the flame well. tongue. Yeah. Trade uh, the flame tongue. Go face. Play flame wreath. Yeah. This is good. This is good. Flame tongue and flame wreath. You want to trade the flame tongue? Yeah. Sack of flame tongue. Yeah. Okay. The tongue is more valuable. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, Sorry, it doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah. I was thinking maybe we don't need to trade. Yeah. Nah. This, is, this is just right. I mean, we have to go with the minion, right? The only way we lose is like Ferals into something. Or, yeah, yeah, this is just right. Yeah, true, true. Ferals yeah, we just, de we just delayed the Doomhammer. It's going to crackle here. Yeah. Or Bolt. Uh, it's Raynard Crackle. It's going to be free. I mean, it can't even hit high, right? No. Yeah. Nice gold damage. Mom, it's mom. always free. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's only Kranich. <laughs> Wow. It is only Kranich now. Raynad, his crackles do always seem to roll for three. 
It's quite a phenomenon. But Raynad has taken his second loss, which means he will be leaving the stage and leaving Kranich all by himself. Versus the world. Effectively. Oh, geez. Um, this is where he feels most comfortable, though. You can see a little smile. He's like, I don't know. He's looking around like, this is what I wanted all along. I, I wanted to play by myself the whole time. Help. I, I'd i be very scared. Kranish does not look happy about this scenario. He's smiling, but <laughs> then the face kind of turns into like, a, I don't know. Both yeah. lives left, though. Dog, RDU, and Navi would have to beat him twice before Kranich beats the Chillblade Crusaders five times. Yeah, five lives remaining as a team. It's going to be difficult. But let's go ahead and see what the next format is going to be that Kranich is going to have to play. Now keep in mind, he only, has, he only has a limited deck pool himself. Let's go ahead and take a look. It is going to be standard. Standard is the format. Yeah, we're this gonna... one's going to get dramatic, but let's go ahead and we're going to have to go to a break for just a moment to give themselves a chance to reset. But don't go anywhere. More Hearthstone Invitational will happen right after this. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Hearthstone Invitational Grand Finals. Currently, Kranich, the only player remaining for the Grime Street Grifters, has to fight up against RDU, Dog, and Nabi Utes of the Chillblade Crusaders, all by his lonesome. Now, that being said, Kranich has been to more world championships than his three opponents combined thus far. One of the few players that has the title a multiple world champion competitor. That yeah. will be changing in January come Amsterdam, but until now, he is one of the few prestige and elite that holds that, but he's got to win five times before the Chillblade Crusaders win twice. Yep, and as the envelope told me from my trusty chest, the next format will be standard. So we're gonna go back to standard uh, for both of these players, and uh, we'll see if Kranich can do it. I don't know, this one's gonna be really tough. 
His standard deck is just Pirate Warrior, though. It's right up his alley. I mean, he's loved to play aggressive decks throughout his entire career. And if they're not aggressive decks, they're typically some sort of combo deck that plays quite aggressively yeah. in delivering end game damage. Uh, and we saw him take his first game with it as well. Yeah. And here's what's going on around the rest of the Hearthstone area here at BlizzCon. The Hearthstone Tavern, brand new this year for 2017, right next to the Hearthstone stage, has players playing some fireside gatherings, getting to do Nemsi Portrait. There's some live music, some food, some drink. It's a great time over there. I had a chance to check it out yesterday uh, after we got done with our matches. And it's a pretty cool experience. Yeah, they got some artist sketches going on over there, too. Yep. I was particularly interested in watching someone draw a magnificent portrait in a short amount of time. Something that I can't do with a long amount of time. Something that most people can't do with any amount of time. Correct. But now we're about to jump into it. You can see on your screen, this one's going to mean a lot. Chillblade Crusaders. They're leading this one. RD does have that one loss, though. Last he time he was on this standard deck, it had a brilliant opening hand, but then it was too heavy at the top end. You know, I mentioned that there were six 10 cost cards in his Druid deck. That's a lot of 10 cost cards. Yes. One sixth of his deck occupies 60 mana worth of cards. That sounds crazy to me. And we'll see if they can get it done again. <laughs> it's just so yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm looking at it. I'm just like, this is three versus one. Oh, man. This, is, this also just makes the set a lot harder as well. I mean, you get to focus by yourself, but now you have to keep track of every little thing. Yep. And I want to go and listen into the Chill Blade Crusaders early on here, see what they're discussing for the Mulligans and how they want to change their game plan to overcome the matchup this time. You flip all the time, but uh, not anymore. <laughs> no, nice. You nailed it. No. You're good. That's good. <laughs> yeah, you did, nailed it, man. Did he also full keep? Did he also full keep again? I didn't see. I, I didn't think see. so, but I'm I not think sure. he did. He seems to be smiling a lot. Uh, <laughs> I think yeah. he has one into two into. All right, just one more. It's like the only situation where that deck is actually decent. But we have also good hands, so I think. Wait, it's do we? Do we? We coin wild growth. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah, have yeah, to. Yeah. Yeah. Coin yeah, wild growth, wild growth. Yeah, yeah. Always you're right. You're right. Yeah. All right, our hands good. Our hands really good. But the question is, will we live? Yeah. I think we have time. So let's see, we'll be at three, then we'll be at five, then we'll be at seven, so we can't even play Prim after Fire, yeah. unless we draw Innervate. The best uh, draw would be spreading Plague, I think. I yeah. think the best draw would be Nourish. Oh, and, or Plague, yeah. Because yeah. then yeah. we can go Wild Growth into Nourish and play the Prim. Yeah, that too. Inspire Warrior? Right. Oh, he's Inspire oh, no, Warrior. No. <laughs> Inspire Warrior. Yeah. Oh my gosh, oh, my you nailed God. it, man. You, what Wow. This one's not looking good for poor old Cranich there. Well, so he does have he does have the blood sale uh, cultist, which is this is a big impact point. It's going to be a turn five. Well, primordial, turn four primordial three. So it's going to a two four weapon now. It's going to move to a three power weapon on the following turn, and he's got two bitter tide hydras to fight with. He he's not out of this one by any stretch Maybe. of the means. Yeah, well, let, let's go ahead and listen in now to the Grime Street Grifters to see if Cranich is discussing these plays with himself. A lot of thoughtful discussion going on there. At least in his head. Cranage, of course, a South Korean native. Uh, English is the second language for him, so. He's struggling to communicate with the second side of his brain. <laughs> He's doing all right. This Naga Corsair is a big deal. And the second Blood Sail Cultist just got drawn as well. That weapon is going to put in, put in some work here. Oh, but he's still going to have to get through a lot. I mean, there's Primordial Drake, which is a lot of health to get through as the taunt. Then he's going to have to get through an ultimate infestation and earthen scales. This is still, he's got, he's still got a long way to go to get through all this damage. But he does have the tools to do it. And actually, Chillblade Crusaders is going to deviate. And this is going to take off probably a little bit more damage from the board, I'd say. Yeah, Primordial Drake would just be represented by a trade purely on board. I, I'm not sure that they had the liberty of doing that just yet. Uh, but this does ramp them into ultimate infestation, which that is a bit more of a problem. However, this is what Bitter Tide Hydra is exactly for. It's to survive some potential swings from your opponent and then yeah. deliver a giant hit. He doesn't have one Bitter Tide Hydra. He has two Bitter Tide Hydras. And that is tons of damage that's going to come on to Chill Bite Crusaders. I'm not sure that that's going to get the job done. 
Yeah, let's go listen to now the Chill Blake Crusaders. A few options this turn. I'm curious what they're going to go with. Just Leroy. Le Wait, just Leroy's one off. Just it? Leroy's one no. Do we never primordial Drake no, Corfo's skills? Play, just, just play Infestation. You sure? Yes. Okay. If we draw Innervate, we can always Innervate UI. Or Innervate uh, skills. Pal. Okay, that's, that's right. Fine. Oh, that's great. Great. We're not yeah. going to win if we play Drake there. Yeah, I agree. Even... I agree. I think this like, is fine. Uh, yeah. If we don't die this turn, we win the game because yeah, we have yeah. Drake skills skills. <laughs> they need seven damage. I don't think he has it, so. Yeah. Like it. We're probably just gonna go Drake scale skill or Medivh scale skill. It might be good. Oh. Oh my oh. god, AJ. Wait, wait. Uh, let's see if the deck can Wow, big draw from Kranich. Bitter Tide Hydra. That is exactly why it's there to punish your opponent right before they stabilize. Kranich gets it done. Still a long way to go for him. But so he starts off on the right foot. But that's RDU second loss. So he's out. And there he goes. Kranz just chopping him down one by one. There's only two opponents remaining for him to get through. Oh, man. This is still going to be a tough road for him. But uh, big smiles across his face as he realized that he won that game. And Dog was confident. He said, ultimate infestation. There's no way they can have seven damage. If they do, they got us. But if we make it through this turn, we win. You didn't quite make it through that turn. There you go, yeah. Dog and Nabi, the only two left. Yeah, I should have should have played that Primordial Drake, dang it. If we would have played the Primordial Drake, guys. Well, four more wins for Cranch to go. He's got to knock out Dog, he's got to knock out Nabi Ute, and he has to do it before he takes two losses. But uh, he's going to have to wait a little bit on that Pirate deck because we are changing the format yeah. once again. This one's going to be big. I'm reaching into my trusty chest. Pulling out an envelope. Let's see what this next format's going to be. This is a must win for Kranich again. Excavated Treasures. That's what I'm talking about. An Excavated Treasures list for Kranich uh, is a Warlock deck. And for this format, players were given shells to work with. It was a pre-built partial deck, about 10 to 15 cards. Once they had that, they had to complete the deck without using any duplicate cards. So every single card in the deck, there's one of, it is a Highlander deck. The decks had themes that were with them, and so the players had to make a choice. Do I build towards that theme, or do I work away from it and just try to use powerful cards to supplement the apparent weaknesses of the, of the existing shells? Yeah, and we'll have to see, because uh, this uh, discard warlock, discard zoo kind of top-end warlock thing from Kranich is quite interesting. It definitely is, and I think that this was definitely the direction to take with it uh, if you're discarding cards, is that you try to turn those discards into a benefit. However, there, there is something that I've often seen Zoo struggle with, and it, secrets are, are quite literally one of those things. Uh, they have a lot of weird effects where the Warlock wants to be able to tailor its attacks to the optimum position. And the secrets from Chill Blade Crusaders in their Hunter deck, uh, they have a, a secret shell. You go type in secret, while you're looking at Hunter cards in Hearthstone, and it's basically every single one. No Dark Trap, uh, but it's early aggression, it's disruption with the secret cards, and meanwhile, Kranich is the one left with the guesswork, and he doesn't have a one drop. He doesn't have much. Howl Fiend is going to be tough for him to use unless he can isolate Vist of Jaraxxus in his hand, or maybe some of the other cards that benefit from discards. But this one's tough. Let's see how the dynamic has changed. Let's go and listen in to Chillblade Crusaders now that they've lost RDU as a player. Yes, I think it's, better. it's just better. Dude, maybe we just one, two, three, four, and then both have on five, and it's just. Just, yeah, just, get yeah, just like the old days, man. Coin. M Gang. M Gang. M Gang is pretty easy here. Oh. Wow. Okay, that's interesting. I think we just eliminate her, but it could be Bear Trap Elemental. No, he's... This he's, trade happens, then we wait, can... Wait, what trade happens? He's going to trade into the Royal yeah, Rays more yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we just have to play Eliminator, right? I mean, it's... I don't know if Bear Trap... Like, he's not going to play around it, and it's not really beneficial yeah, for like, us, right? Yeah, like, blocking yeah. his pointless. Like, yeah, yeah, he's going to evaluate his options and be like, I can't beat it, so yeah. he's going to test it. Yeah, so yeah. he can't buff. A lot less uh, talkative without RDU there. Yeah, you can tell they miss RDU because as soon as we get, went into the listening, Navi would start talking about the good old days. <laughs> he meant the good old days when they had RDU on the stage with them. But 
Granite took a risk with this Halfie coming off, and let's see what it pulls. Ooh. Dr. Boom. So that was gone. That, that was likely to be discarded way before that point. Dr. Boom is in there to just be a power draw once you get to that stage of the game. Uh, you know, he's got Lakari Fellhound, he's got Doom Guard, he's got Dark Bargain. He's not going to win this game without playing cards. And so e even though he is, you know, taking quite a risk with the discards here, he does have to pay off with the Fist of Draxus. Once that's discarded, it deals four damage. So uh, that could potentially pick off the Illuminator. It could hit one of the remaining minions from Chillblade Crusaders. It could just go face, which is the situation he is really hoping it doesn't do. Yeah. And currently, Navi Ud is actually the pilot for the Chillblade <gasps> Oh, it hits the Firefly! It's going to live now! Tonight, uh oh. A tale of terrible tragedy. I don't know if that's good for Granite or good for Chillblade Crusaders. What's great oh, for Granite? She gets another attack? Oh, and he draws the Malchusar Zim. So now he can start drawing with stuff. If he wants. But that one's tough. Maybe just go with the Lakari Felhan and put more power on the board. I mean, you saw the look on his face. He drew it. He's. Yeah. Oh, geez, now what do I do? I was just going to play the Felhan, but. What could I draw that's better? Yeah, and that's that's a tough thing. And I, as I was saying earlier, Naviud has not lost a game yet on the Invitational stage. He's currently 5-0 and so far when he's the pilot. And he's currently piloting this Excavated Treasures Hunter deck. You are not the boss of so if Kranich were to win here, he would be handing Naviud his first loss of this event. Kranich's going to go for the card draw. I think that's the best one to discard. His hand is quite heavy, though. Yeah, he's actually got a ton of one-drops in the deck. The well, thing about it is when he slices over this Barnes here, now Chillblade Crusaders has to make a decision. Do we kill the Malchazar Zimp, or do we kill the Councilman, which can grow? Let's listen to Chillblade Crusaders and hear how they want to take this turn. We can Shredder instead, uh, but... Is this Shredder is, ever better? Um, actually, might be. This is pretty bad against Doom God, sir. So. Yeah, we lose the game on the spot if he has Doom Guard. Um, and we can just still one-drop late up next turn. Yeah, I mean, I Shredder's sh better. I think Shredder's better, yeah. yeah. The question is, do we play Secret Keeper or Flame Elemental? Next turn, we have the option to buff the Secret Keeper to kill off the 1-3. You know what I'm saying? I like it, yeah. Um, but we're, if, we, if we play both that, we can't, right? So it's an argument. Um, I think it's just Flame Ellie. I think it's Flame Ellie as well, because I think we're trading with the Shredder regardless. Yeah. Ooh. You hear what they said? If he has, if they Doom Guard, uh -oh. we lose on the spot, and they don't trade the Malkazar Zim. This Doom Guard's gonna get a ton of value. Well, now Kranich has more options once again. Does he want to have the defensive measure of the Kari Fellhound? And he does. Doom Guard pitched away though. That was card he wanted to keep, but then Cool Dynomancer gets picked up. Now he he's gonna get back Doctor Boom and, or and Doom Guard potentially. With the cool Dynamancer, if he can get that on the board next turn. Yeah, some summon a minion that you've discarded this game is the Death Rattle on Cool Dynomancer. So it either represents five points of damage repetitively, or he's able to to uh, just get a giant minion on board when it dies. Potentially, yeah. There's a, another minion that he's discarded this game so far, I believe. But there's two big oh. ones in the pool. Professor Future Side. Whenever you play a secret, you play a random hunter secret. And this is where things start getting really tricky for Kranich. Yeah, I mean, the deck already has a ton of weird secrets in it already. So you're effectively working with two almost random secrets because it's a random secret that they've drawn and they have a ton of them. And then it's just a random hunter secret in general. So he honestly has no idea. Wow. And it's going to be Freezing Trap. Checks. That's actually a pretty good one. And, and, and that was a check that I felt was necessary for Kranich, which means that the one remaining now is Bear Trap uh, on board. And that's beautiful news for him. He needed it to be something that he could offset very easily. Yeah. And, he, and he actually gets to preserve the Malchazar Zen potentially for later as well. But more secrets get drawn. Oh. And Chillbait Crusaders, they play the secret and not the secret keeper to go with it. So they're committing to the Lotheb here. Yeah. If they don't play the Lotheb, then I think that might have been a little bit of an error. But Hidden Cash, that's not the best one, especially since if they play Lotheb now. It's going to be a secret keeper that Just gets buffed. Buff. The secret keeper. <laughs> it, it buffs it anyway. There you go. <laughs> Correct sequencing from the Chillblade Crusaders. <laughs> Let's go ahead and listen into them now. They're discussing a lot of options. Let's take a listen. I think uh, we should play around the Mana Wraith, right? Because like, if we pull the Doomsayer, he just passes. Doomsayer goes off. This thing procs. And we lose. Yeah. Yeah, so you want to play around? We play around Mana Wraith then. Yeah, because we, we can't beat Doomsayer, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I agree. I see. Oh, it scared me a little bit. <laughs> really? Yeah. I thought I saw, I thought I saw some red. Some red? Yeah, yeah, I actually thought it was Lightwell. Yeah. I was like, oh, Lightwell. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, saw, I saw that also. Yeah. 
Have you right, discarded so any bad minions? I, don't, I actually don't I actually know. Don't know. <laughs> wow, blood. I know we just got a dark bargaining. Snakes. So now Cranch is going to get the summon from the cruel Dynomancer. Let's see. He has discarded Doomguard this game. Let's see if he gets it back. Dr. Boom! But the problem with this is Professor Putricide's on board, threatening a ton of damage in this spot. And so 6-6 six, six Lifesteal, Hidden Cache activates. No further punish. The truth is in here. And now it's moving up to seven power. So there are two major kills on board that Chillblade Crusaders wants to take care of. And that Eagle Horn Bow is a bit late to the party. Yeah, this one's going to be full. No matter which way you slice it, Kranich will be healing to full almost. Uh, That's a lot of extra life taps. That is a lot of extra life taps, and currently Chillblade Crusaders is starting to run out of stuff. Eagle Horn Bow can be a lot of repetitive damage, especially with how many secrets this deck has, and the secret that they still have active, which is Bear Trap. Kranich, I don't, I don't think he's focused on attacking face right now. He wants to exhaust Chillblade Crusaders' resources. <laughs> And then take care of things afterwards. And so Blood Queen Lanathel. Holy moly. Ooh, that hurts. Yeah, full health with effectively a reset board for Kranich. He's got life tap. He's got the resource advantage. And Chilblade Crusaders has the bear trap, a secret keeper, and a one charge eagle horn bow. And a steady shot. When both hero powers damage one player, usually the player that gets damaged. It's the one that goes down, but Clutch Mother's Office. No more discard cards in hand at the moment, but there's a ton in the deck, so that card could get a lot of value. Going to realize it's Bear Trap, and that is a ton of damage staring at it. That him. damage is starting to pile up now. I'm, Kranich played that attack awfully fast as well. I'm curious what the merits are to attacking Secret Keeper uh, in this spot. He probably thought it was Explosive Trap. That's why he wanted to attack first and evaluate the draw. Draw his card. Because he hadn't attacked the hero yet. And you can see him now. He's thinking about it. He's like, I did not consider Bear Trap. Yeah. That one's tough. Kindly Grandma, though, big not draw. the best draw, so. That's one of the worst draws left in the deck. They have a lot of big Chilly. stuff in the deck, actually. A lot. There's, there's a Reno Jackson, there's a Sludge Belcher, a Savannah Hymane, their own Dr. Boom, Ragnaros. Avian Watcher. There's also Kindly Grandmother. <laughs> but Chilblade Crusaders knows They're what the plan the is here. That's right. They might as well take some of this power off the board. I think this is pretty smart. It's going to give Kranich a draw. He's looking for big stuff here. Uh-oh. It's not big stuff. Now, that being said, Chillblade is down to 17 as well. Implosion. There, there's no... There's no Unleash the Hounds in Chillblade Crusader's deck. And so... They're, they're going to get reduced to one power this turn if Kranich uses the Veteran and trades over the Iron for Grizzly. 3-3 three, three, Taunt's dead, and then Haunted Creeper trades into the 3-1. Chillback Crusaders, they're going to have to figure this out. Their time is limited. Let's listen in. That would be the action, not High Hill. Yeah, Explosive would be, like, super good. <gasps> Don't. Don't. Yeah. <laughs> Just face and play it, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> uh, we called our one out. Yep. Oh, yeah. that, you're, you're getting really good at that. Yeah, I know. I know. I do it on stream all the time. It's good. All right, just do it. Wow. Uh oh. I and mean, Cranch, awfully low on life, and when he procs his trap, he's gonna take two more. Adds a charge to the eagle horn bow. Two more on the doorstep every single turn with the hero power. Yeah, I, I mean, if he hero powers here, he goes under nine after the explosive trap, which means he just dies in two turns, the Gorn Bow plus the hero power. His deck, as far as I can tell, does not have any healing besides the Blood Queen Lanathel, except for Kazamakis. Kazakus potion could game armor, but he hasn't drawn it. This is not looking good for Kranich. That was. As the Chilblade Crusader said, the best draw in their deck. I'm, I'm curious, actually, if Kranich should attack in this spot. There are a couple more cards that he could take advantage of this explosive trap with. Uh, I'm looking at Dr. Boom to deliver the Boombot damage. And with Ravenous Pterodax to create a big minion that lives past it when it attacks. And then the last one is with Bone Mare. But now he limits his time. 
to push for damage and hope yeah. that it's enough. But Chill Blade Crusaders, that bow started moving before their turn started. Yeah. Do they have any taunts? Bone Mare could keep them alive. Dark Peddler could pick up some healing. Voodoo Doctor. Voidwalker Voodoo also keeps him alive. Reliquary Seeker so close to being good. Yeah, he I mean, just needs a little bit more life. He's got to take Voidwalker here, and he can't tap. Why do you go? No Houndmaster. Just one kill command. No, there's no kill command. Yeah, he... I like the trading with the 1-1 one, one here. That leaves space on his board for extra power. Let's count how much power he has on the board. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 damage. So if the bow comes in... Oh, wait. Chilblade Crusaders is dead. They're dead. Exact lethal. They have no way to fend off the board pressure. Their secret doesn't interact with board. And they can only deal two damage. Cranch has used all of his cards and the maximum amount of life that he possibly could to get to the scenario! Kranich does it wow. again! Another one in the books! Still both of his lives remaining left in this grand finals after a very close game. He I thought he was done with it. He, he can't! He's gonna stay up here all day. He says, I'm not leaving. This is my giant touchscreen. That's, that's the discussion over there. Do you start to get nervous? Does the morale start to break? No, we should have done. We should have done. I'd like to hear it, but Kranich now, he's closing the gap. And that lead suddenly isn't so massive anymore. Yeah, it's, he's the only one player, but it's currently 4-3. So we can take a look now at the lives and how this shakes up. Now Nabiut, that was his first loss. He was 5-0 as the pilot in the Hearthstone Invitational from the beginning, from day one. And Kranich has just given him his first loss in the Grand Finals. Still both lives left. Three to two is the wins now. Yeah, we're gonna go away for just a few moments as we get ready for the next game, but don't go anywhere. More Hearthstone Invitational right after this. The 2017 Hearthstone Invitational is brought to you in part by Republic of Gamers, Intel, T-Mobile, and NVIDIA.
And welcome back to the Hearthstone Invitational live from BlizzCon 2016. Make some noise if you guys are enjoying the Invitational. And if you want to see this one go the distance as Kranich continues to fight back in this series versus the Chill Blade Crusaders, the, the only representative left of the Grime Street Grifters, Raynad eliminated. Patra eliminated. It's only Kranich left. But he's got two lives. Two more, that's right. He's like one fourth of a cat. <laughs> that's exactly what I was thinking. But it's time to see what the format is going to be for game number eight as I reach once again into my trusty chest. Envelope number eight. The format will be standard. Standard again. All right. Well, Cranich is going to be back on the Pirate Warrior. Yep, he is 2-0 with that Pirate Warrior currently. And he's looking to make that a third one. He is on a winning streak right now. And if I'm in the Chill Bed Crusader spot, I'm feeling a tad nervous about this one. I, I would be too. That's a couple of games that now that they, they've lost in a row, the, the score's starting to get quite close. And Cranich, they just got to look across at him. He's just smiling. It's a menacing glare. It, the matchup, Impossible to read. <laughs> and the matchup is not super good here for Chillblade Crusaders. They are, they are playing Highlander Priest. This is thought to be the most powerful deck in standard. Uh, I, I would quite agree with it. But this is how afraid they are of the power potential from Cranich. They hang on to Shadow Word Death in order to handle Bitter Tide Hydra. <laughs> now, one of the problems that Chillblade Crusaders will face in this matchup is they not only have to fend off the big minions, but they have to fend off the small ones and the weapons as well. Yeah, I think those are the big ones there because their deck does lack some removal. Of course, the shell uh, for them is going to be pretty good. But um, I mean, we've seen in the past. Let's move, go back to like the Summer Championship, which is the most recent standard event that we've had. Priest had a pretty good win rate against just about everything. It's a true story. It was just pretty good across the board. It wasn't great against anything, but it wasn't poor against anything. The Pyro Warrior was pretty non-existent. So we'll have to sort of, you know, reset what we know and think, well, is this Prince Keliseth Pyre Warrior for Kranich going to be able to get the job done through Raza of Shattery Brandwin? They got to get there first. Yeah, their goal is to, is to not let Chillbed Crusaders get there first. Yeah. Um, and this Fiery War Axe is going to be doing quite a job at just that. It's going to cut down this Radiant Elemental. And these Fire uh, uh, Fly little guys here, they're going to chip away turn after turn after turn. The removal spells in Chillblade Crusader's hand are both situational and or they're costly. And so right now, Cranish's game plan is to set up a board where they are not super powerful versus him. But Tar Creeper is a heck of a card to stop a lot of that pressure. Oh yeah, it is. But look at Cranish's next turn. He can go South Sea Captain, upgrade Dread Corsair, can trade over one of the Fireflies and a four attack by Warax. Ooh, Ooh, that might change things a little uh, bit, that, though. I think that completely changes the way that he's looking at this. So he uses the upgrade. This is going to reduce the Dread Corsair down to zero. It's minus one cost for each power on the weapon. So then that's in free. He's got a pirate as the prerequisite. Upgrades that weapon one more time. Tar Creeper's taken care of. Boom. And weapons are really tough for Priest to deal with without weapon removal. So let's go and listen in the Chillblade Crusaders. Looks like they're joking around, but let's take a listen. It's pain here. Yeah, yeah. Pain oh, up. no. Pain three, four. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dude, what? <laughs> Actual. <sighs> what face, man? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Damn, dude. Damn, son. Where'd you find that? <laughs> that was, yeah, that was pretty spooky. New phone, you just. Uh, New phone. And th they're going to have to Shadow Word Death next as well. So the Holy Fire is going to be the last remaining removal. And Kranich is beating down the door quick. He is. And he's smiling. He's like, yep, I played quite a bit of Pirate Warrior. This is where I feel at home. Spirit Lash, though. It's a lot of healing, but it, it's actually only eliminating one minion from the board in this spot. So yeah. th this is still not the easiest of turns for Chillblade Crusaders. I mean, they have a long way to go before this is stabilized. Yeah, if they go with Shadow Word Death plus heal, then that means they're staring at Six plus mm -hmm. five damage on the board. That's 11. They'd be at 17. Cranich would only have an extra three from hand. It actually looks like they're scared. So they are going to go with the Spear Lash, put the Shadow War Death. They only remove one minute from the board. But it looks like they are very scared of what's to come for Cranich. Oh, my. That, that is actually quite a significant draw for Cranich as well. So I imagine he's going with Captain in this spot. 
He's going to go with the uh, Frolic Berserker. He says, you play a minion, and I intend to hit you for way harder than you think I'm going to. Yep. And so this is actually quite smart from Cranch. With the deck list being open, he knows that Holy Fire is just about the last remaining one. So if Holy Fire comes out on this Frolic Berserker, that means that the Captain buff is going to stay around for a little bit longer. Well, here it is. If Kranich draws at least a little bit of damage, he's got 11 damage on board, and Chillblade Crusaders are currently at 14. He needs three. That's not going to do it this turn, but it will next turn. If Chillblade Crusaders don't pick up another spell to combo with this Priest of the Feast, then yes, that is a lot of damage. Let's see what the draw is going to be for the Chillblade Crusaders. It is Holy Smite. So the Captain they buff, though. But they can rem remove a, a damage from the board and heal for eight this turn with two spells. Uh, the with the priest of, the priest, priest of the Feast. The Feast of the Priest. They're, they're, they're dead. I mean, it's got to be some sort of crazy Lyra combo. Yeah, yeah and I, I don't know if they're going to spot that. How much damage do they think is, is going to come from hand? I don't know, but I want to listen in now to the Chillblade Crusaders and see what they think is the best play to let them live. Yeah, I think he does as well. I think we, I don't know. What do you think? We don't even win with Potion, right? They so, both they both really feel like losing plays. Yeah, I mean, we just have to go for the, the Priest. Yeah, I, sure. I think like, the Priest We don't even win with Potion. We have to get, like, Potion Binding Heal. Yeah, yeah, into, yeah. Or, like, Flash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just like... Just Priest. Yeah, it's my 1-1. One, one. Yep, yeah, yeah. Cash in the coin, I guess. Wow. That is not enough. Kranich has Arcanite Reaper in hand. He's going to take another game and even up the series leaving Dog and Nabi Oot one life left each. And he's going to do it. The core going to lead. Say it came from the top. Wow. Suddenly, the Chillblade Crusaders have got to be feeling awfully nervous. Kranich is on a big winning streak. Let's hear it for Kranich. All tied up. He's got two lives left. Dog and Navi each have one. He's a god among men at the moment. He, yeah. said, he said it prior to the interview. What did it mean to him to win this? And he said, Korea dominates. Yeah, and I, I wonder how much hope Raynad and Patra had when they left the stage. Down four to one. And they said, Kranich, good luck, bud. And here we are. And here we are. That's right. This one's getting exciting. They are having a little bit of conversations, but Kranich just sort of pretty introspective. Just trying to think, you know, how am I going to take this one? I'm going to play my minions. I'm going to hit them. I hope that's good. Yeah. All right, but it's time to determine the format for game number nine. Who's going to come out in the lead as it's all tied up? Another envelope. And it's going to be, uh-oh, wild. wild. Wild is going to be the format. And I think from Kranich, we've yet to see his wild deck at least today. So this one's going to be quite interesting. Navi Oot is going to be the pilot for this one. And he's brought Freeze Mage. For a long time, he's been known as a Freeze Mage player. He's played a ton of this deck and is very adept with it. However, Kranich is right back where he's comfortable. He's playing an aggressive Druid deck. And when I say aggressive, I mean very aggressive. This deck is full of one mana cards. It's full of two mana cards. It tops out at four or five mana with Jeeves and Living Mana. Jeeves is meant to redraw. Living Mana is meant to refill the board. Yeah. The rest of his deck is dedicated to getting efficient minions on board, buffing them across, and then punishing his opponent for not taking care of them. So that's a pretty nice early hand for Chillblade Crusaders. They have both Mad Scientists, so they're going to be able to pull some secrets out, increase the quality of their draw. The big thing here for Freeze Mage against Aggro Druid is getting off a clutch Frost Nova Doomsayer. But the one thing about these wild lists is that they expect Doomsayers. So Doomsayers in a lot of control lists in wild. So Kranich has put double crazed Alchemist in his list to fight against it. He hasn't drawn one, but who knows? By the time Chillblade Crusaders draws their Doomsayer, he may have the defense against it. He's going to go with Haunted Creeper first. Looking to get something on board that uh, is unlikely to be punished by anything that Chillbed Crusaders can do. And I imagine this is going to be a uh, mark of the lotus here. He's going to oh, start yeah. pushing damage. He's going to start keeping the board position under control. 
And turn after turn, when Chillblade Crusaders doesn't answer this, that damage will start piling up. Yeah, and I, I want to go ahead and take a listen into Chillblade Crusaders here and see what they're thinking about this early start from Kranich. Uh, yeah. It's pinging. definitely that, because yeah, like yeah, the yeah. pinging is like yeah, yeah. Trying, well, you're trying thinking, to play around a buff. I was thinking bolt that oh, really? player on second, okay. bolt, second buff. Sure, sure. But uh, no, I like this more. No, yeah, I like this a lot more as well. I just need to get to the blizzards, I think. Yeah, yeah, the blizzards are very, very yeah. important. There. Yep. As long as my, uh, my shaman doesn't match up against his druid. And excavated. We're like pretty solid, yeah. my ducks, I think. Except Pirate Warrior Priest is like, meh. <laughs> they feel nervous, TJ. <laughs> they do look really nervous. They're even thinking about the next game. <laughs> Dog's like, oh man, I don't want to be eliminated. <laughs> like, I hope we get something other than that, because uh, I'm worried about my matchups, but. Hmm. We'll see Kranich show some tough choices. Crypt Lord doesn't put as much power on the board, but it ramps up as time goes on. And I think he's looking at a turn four Jeeves. And I think that's why he's trying to empty his hand here a little bit. It goes with Poisonous. I like the choice. We're still two turns away from Blizzard. That is a nod specifically to Doomsayer in this spot. He says, turn four Doomsayer. I don't want to have to pour a bunch of damage into it. I want to be able to take it out right away. Yeah. Uh, Not really many minions left for Chillblade Crusaders at this point. Yeah, and you can tell Chillblade Crusaders not drawing cards this turn. They're trying to clear some damage off the board, but they're really trying to get to the Blizzards. Oh, my. Oh, man. Now, even if the, the, his board is clear, though, he's got Living Man to follow it up. Can I he still has a lot of damage to get through, though. Freeze Mage is a very resilient deck. There's no question about it, but if there's something that Cranch's deck does here, it's put a lot of stuff on board, do a lot of damage very fast. And then with that Jeeves there, Jeeves suddenly is turning into a bit of a priority kill. Uh, it will almost never benefit Chillblade Crusaders. Their deck is about drawing cards, filling up their hand, and finding the combo turns. Uh, in this matchup, that is secondary to eliminating the board state. But they'd, they'd rather kill more damage than just kill a Jeeves, that's for sure. I'm not, well, that draw could change things now. Yeah, now they have a ton of freeze, Blizzard included. Well, let's go and listen to the Chillblade Crusaders. They're debating on some things. Listen in. Yeah, let's think more I think, I I think, think it's just right. Like, yeah, yeah, so do I. At a certain point, we're just like trying to fatigue him, which is like not really yeah, a good strat, you know? Of, yeah, 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 we'd rather run him out of cards. So He did play Jeeves pretty early, but that just probably means he has Living Mana in hand or Roar. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's just, yeah, just kill it. It's probably fun. Excuse me. You are on fire. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's relevant, though, if we save Nova Doomsayer, because Crazy Elk needs a spawn on board, right? Yeah. So that's like a pretty big consideration for later. Oh, yeah, so you're talking about popping the Creeper when we Nova Doom. Mm -hmm. So, like, yeah, not being yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because at a certain point, he's going to saturate the board enough to where he's not going to be able to play anything. He, yeah, we won't be able to play around it. Yeah, yeah. Especially if he has to, like, living mana. It's pretty good for us. I mean, Blizzard is okay, but we only have one AoE clear for the Blizzard. So, like, this turn, if we drew. Um, no, we can't. We can't, because, yeah, we don't yeah. have the mana. Uh, it's probably just paying the patches. We're not dead. I mean, is Crazed Elk Roar lethal? Crazed Elk Roar is a lot. So, Crazed Elk, uh, it'll go to 8, 10, and then it's another 10, 20, 22, 26, 27. It's 27, yeah. Crazed Elk Roar is way over. What do you think about uh, Frostbolt Lance on the 1 7 and then ping the 2 1? Hmm. You think that's too much commitment? He doesn't run Hydras. We're kind yeah, of yeah, burning a lot. Run hundreds, we're kind yeah. of like burning a lot of spells. Yeah, that's the thing. But, but the if thing we, is, if that's his that only threat, right? Like that's. Yeah, yeah, that is the only threat. So I agree. I'm kind of comfortable killing it. But we, next turn we can't even go ping Blizzard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, we I, we're gonna have to. But we're probably gonna know the. Yeah. yeah. I think that the bolt lance that is is strong. Right. Like you said, it's like his only threat. Yeah, and we can ping the two one also. That way, like Roar just gets no value, and we can win with Alex later. Yeah. Yeah, I think sticking Mark out is, like, a little scary, but uh, yeah, it's really scary. <laughs> Cranch, looking a little bit nervous about his hand, going, God, I really could use all my buff cards right about now. Yeah, and he doesn't want to commit the living mana because uh, because of Blizzard, but he just 
didn't see Blizzard here on turn six. And a lot, I know a lot of people think that when they don't see a card, that's great for the turn. They feel that's a time. And, and not only that, but the turn from Chillblade Crusaders is quite weak. And the Frostbolt Ice Lance on the 1 7. Fearing, of course, Crazy Alchemist flipping that and delivering a lot of damage. Yeah, and he's just going to go for it. And there's RDU and Patra watching from the stands. Patra, of course, on Grime Street Grifters and RDU on Chillblade Crusaders. Rooting for their team. Granite just starting to get done, and RDU looks a little stressed. I'd be stressed too. I'm stressed right now. And Granite, I like the way he plays this. He's not, not baiting out the Blizzard, but he's trying to just make a board that's very Blizzardable. And turn after turn, this gets tougher for Chillblade Crusaders. Mm. That Blizzard is, is, it's getting close to that time. So they have a lot of extra card draw. They have a Frost Nova to buy some time, but they don't really have much else outside of that. You heard them talk about simply running Kranich out of cards in this spot. Yeah. That's a lot of stuff. <laughs> you do have to get through a lot of stuff to run an aggro druid out of cards. You can do it quite easily by leaving Jeeves on the board, but uh, is it something that's smart? Yeah, then they quite easily kill you when you have <laughs> Yes, they do. When you do that. Oh, runs out on uh, me. But now it's, you know, whether or not they want to use the Blizzard and they're going to... Buy another turn here. Second Blizzard, though. That's right. what they were looking for. That's going to give them the green light. And as a second Blizzard found without really drawing that many cards as well. So that is quite a big deal. Finally, a buff is found, but you don't want it into a frozen turn. Nope. Granite's just channeling the, the power of his mind all alone on a big stage in front of a giant touchscreen monitor with a bunch of frozen minions in front of him. What does he do? Let's go and listen in to Chillblade Crusaders, see if it's finally time to use one of these blizzards. I think was it? Uh, Would you want to know this? No, there's no. There's, no, I think no, no we're, we're, aren't we pinging? Pinging the 2-1, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You don't, we don't play novice. No, yeah. no, no, no. Okay, good. Man, Crazed Alec is a scary card. Yeah, I know. Oh I can't believe they're running Double Crazed Alec. It's just, yeah. We're going to have to, like, of all Cobalt Fireball. <laughs> Maybe, dude. I think we, yeah, we might have to. If we get a Nova, we can go Cobalt Nova or something, and they might have to roar it. I don't know. We'll see. Let's go. No. Yeah, right, we just gotta we just gotta draw. I mean, he, he can't he can't pop us with a good interval, right? Like maybe that thing has so much attack. Right, yeah. right, right, yeah. <laughs> This is tough. Yeah. yeah. We actually need Nova here, I think. Yeah, yeah. I think we do as well. We actually need Nova. <laughs> right, All right, so stop with us. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. I, I think that's game, eh? Yeah. Uh, um. Do we ever go Iceland's torch? Or we just lose to Roar, right? Yeah. Do we even have? I don't even think. I don't think we can win if we Blizzard. Realistically. Yeah, Nate, so I don't. I really don't think we Blizzard. Like no, we never don't. Blizzard here yeah, because yeah. we have no more AOE. We well, we have Nova Doom, but so we don't have Nova. We, don't, we can't. And we, we can't we draw. Can't, we need many. two draws. Yeah. yeah, we only have one draw. So I think the play is Ice Lance, Bolt, Torch, or something. Wait, he's one off popping us though. Like if we get popped at one, it's like. Do we get popped at one? Uh, Ice Lance, Bolt, Torch. Oh wait, no, no. You're talking about. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Maybe we're fine. So are we not uh we ice we have to ice the. We we bolt that one right. We bolt this one. No, we, uh, we bolt that just, one. Yeah. Because then he can just alpha though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just go. So what do you like? Um. Bolt this. Yeah. And then torch the. Torch the three one. The or three, three three. A three three. And then we have to lance as well, right? Yeah. I mean, we get popped with like damage, right? Yeah, yeah. Wow. That is a ton of stuff to use. And he drew both Crazed Alchemists, which means... He pops at one. He pops at one with Crazed Alchemists. And that is the situation that Chillblade Crusaders is trying to avoid. That exact scenario. Now they have to freeze face and the board for the rest of the game. Yeah, and if you're wondering how big that touch screen was... There it is. Yeah. He's leaning over to get a better look, too. He, he, has, he has checked this about 17 times in his head by now. Yep. And 
this might be Kranich taking another win. I don't know about this I one. I mean, this is disastrous looking. Ice block popped. Chilled by Crusaders with Alex doesn't even stop the damage. They, the, the Blizzard stops what's on board right now, but it doesn't stop Kranich's face. And that's it. They can accolade a pain, ping it, and draw the other ice block or the other Nova. And no, the other Nova won't work. So other Nova it literally has to be the ice, ice block. Ones. But then how do they follow up to the ice block and win? They don't. That's the thing, Admirable. They don't. They're going to fireball their own face. Kranich takes another win. That means Naviud is eliminated, and Kranich is one win away TJ. from securing the win for Grime Street Grifters. Are you kidding me right now? Kranich has won four straight games to bring this series to a lead after trailing four games to one. Both of his teammates knocked out, and he's up there by himself, and now he's got one win left to go. Dog now is in the position where he has to win twice in a row against Kranich to get it done. This one, this has been cool. Kranich is, is putting in some work. Three aggressive decks across the three formats. He was given standard. He said, you know what, let's play Pirate Warrior. He was given a wild. He said, well, I'm going to draw a lot of cards with Jeeves after I play all of my early cards. And then when we gave him a shell of cards that discarded his own cards, he ended up with an aggressive zoo deck that tries to play strong on curve and punish the opponent for not answering key minions. This has been a fantastic performance for Kranich, and suddenly it's match point for his victory here at BlizzCon. Yeah, and this is, uh, this is similar to what we you know, had talked about with some of the Chillblade Crusaders about this very situation. So let's go ahead and take a listen in. What if he solos us, man? Dude, I know, man. <laughs> That'd be it's, so sick, actually. Ah, uh, yeah, it's crazy. That'd be so no, sick. it wouldn't. Are you serious? That'd be si I mean, I don't know. I think it's cool. I'd be mad. I I'd mean, be I'd be mad. mad. <laughs> I'd be mad also. It was, it'd be sick. I wouldn't talk to Kranich ever again. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Like, oh, you're good. Wait, I'm... That was before game seven. So that was quite a while ago now. And uh, it looks like I don't think Navi is going to be talking to Kranich much anymore. Yeah. Because he's looking like he's about to pull that sweep right out from under him. Well, it's about that time again, TJ. It's time for the trusty chest. Let's go ahead and see what these guys will be playing in game number 10. This could be it. It's going to be, oh, excavated treasures. That's right. We're going back to excavated treasures for game number 10. Dog literally in last game said, the only thing I don't want is to play against Kranich's deck in Excavated Treasures. He didn't want to be the pilot versus what Kranich has. And now that exact scenario has happened. After they were up four games to one, with three minds on the stage taking on Kranich. I don't know. Can Kranich do it? Now it's Dog, the one in sort of the hot seat. And these are the decks. Chillblade Crusaders is going to be piloting the Excavated Treasures Paladin, which was made from a shell of basically all Divine Shield Paladin cards. And Kranich, representing Grime Street Grifters, is playing Warlock, which is a shell that's built on discard effects. Well, Dog has drawn two of his very important cards in the matchup. Yep, Shield and Minibot Muster for Battle can beat just about any early game deck. But that's not bad for Kranich as well. That, that is also a very good opening hand. So the key for Kranich is going to be establishing board dominance. He needs to eliminate Dog's ability to fight back against the board. And then once he has the lead, use that life tap to make sure that he's simply playing more threats than Dog can handle for the rest of the game. In Dog's position, his game plan is to use that shielded minibot and that muster for battle and do whatever it takes to keep Kranich from taking that lead. So the Keeper of Uldamon to follow up muster for battle is also very key in this situation. But Ragnaros at the top end is not the card he wanted to see. Not quite. <laughs> we don't hear that card very often, that's for sure. Reno Jackson drawn as well, so now some of the life total pressure alleviated. And that is one of the main reasons that Kranich also will be focusing on taking control of the board pressure instead. Once he has control of the board, that Reno Jackson just buys Dog a little bit of extra time while Kranich is drawing extra cards. So this muster for battle is the key card. 
Will it be able to get him through the whole game, though? That's the thing. He's got Keeper of Oldman, but after that, it's Reno Jackson, and that's it. I think this is really going to come down to if Cranish can get this board rolling before the top end really matters for Dog, i.e. Chillblade Crusaders. Well, you can see why it's a big problem. Cranish is likely to lose his board in this spot. And Dog thinking about how the race looks already, chipping away at damage. He says, you know what, take one of my 1-1s. I'll use my life total to take care of that 3-2 remaining. And that's fine with him. He's got Reno Jackson. Dark Peddler, a champion card. Ooh. Sir Finley Mergleton. Well, that might be like the pocket pick for Kranich. I'm not really sure. Lowly Squire doesn't offer a lot of potential here. Young Dragonhawk is a dead card on this position. And Sir Finley Mergleton is not getting played right away. He, he wants to have life tap. But at a later oh, stage of the game, say he's not really able to afford the life tap. Exchanges his hero power out for a different one. Let's see if that gets a work done. What's the ideal hero power for you here, Admirable? Well, life tap. <laughs> what about after life tap? Uh, probably die insect. That'd be a great one to discover. If only you could pick that from Sir Finley Mergle. But Dog just going to use Keeper of Ultimate as a temple tool here. And, and that's what it's about. It's about fighting for the board. He's got it. He does. Pretty handedly as well. Okay, these are not strong minions for Cranch right now. Halfiend is, is quite a risk. It's time to go, time to go adventuring. Yikes. Well, Dagger Mastery, I think that's the best one. That's the only thing that really allows him to fight for the board. That life total is going to dwindle awfully quick. Yeah, the one thing he has going for them is Dog does not really have much to snowball this lead. Conk Hammer, oh though. Oh, my. That's pretty good. That, that is very good. It's about the sequencing here, and uh, the pressure is sort of on for these players. They're not playing for themselves, they're playing for their teams. If they make a mistake, they're letting their teams down. We talked about how we gave these guys a fun format, come and play on the big stage at BlizzCon, and they all took it very seriously. You can tell that they want to win quite badly. Not for themselves, but just for their teams. Lothep doesn't block much with this Paladin deck. It's not very spell heavy. Eldor Peacekeeper waiting in the hand for Chillblade Crusaders. And Dog, this is, a, this is a pretty easy opportunity for him to continue snowballing this board. And now suddenly, Force Tank Max, Ragnaros, th these are becoming real threats to Kranich in situations where he otherwise would be driving the pace of this game. Now the question is, does he override this Cog Hammer with Rallying Blade? It would be more efficient damage, he could attack first and then re-equip equip Rowling Blade to uh, sort of be mana efficient. But at, at the current moment, he doesn't have a play going into the next turn. So I don't know if it's really worth it. I think just using the hero power and getting another 1-1 one, one out on the board might, might be a little bit better. And, and this is this is snowballing out of control for Cranish now. Uh, zoo, aggressive zoo decks don't really have ways to come back onto these styles of boards. There's a Deathwing in the deck. Yeah, and we're a ways away from that. He does, he does have a copy of Kazakas because, again, these are high later decks. They're only allowed to play one. But Silver Golem gets summoned. And Bone Mare's on deck. I mean, there's 12 damage staring at him. <laughs> Master Jouster. Uh, yeah. There's team. <laughs> Artie, you and Navi, you watching their teammate Dog trying to get it done. Oh, wins the Joust as well. This one looks like it's in the books, admirable. I don't think Ranch has a way to come back. Did we speak too soon? <laughs> I don't know if Dark Bargain could even get him there. Master Jouster has to hit, or it has to hit the Master Jouster and one of the three attack minions. But it's your only option. Let's see. Not going to do it. Dog's going to stay alive. He's going to win this game, and that means we are going to our 11th and final game in the Invitational. This last game will decide which team is going to win this tournament.
I didn't expect to come down to this. I don't think either of these teams had expected it to come down to this after Chill Blake Crusader started out 4-1. and one. Kredich brought it back, but both of these players now, only one life remains, which means only one game remains. Kredich Ooh. versus Dog. I'm nervous and I'm not even playing. So it's pretty nerve-wracking. I think Kranich at this point has to be thinking, you know what? I don't think many people had hopes that I would make it this far. I just have to go into this last match and think, don't really have anything to lose at this point. Dog looks very focused on something in the distance. Yeah. Maybe a Frisbee. There you go. This is it. It all comes down to one last game. And that means one last time we reach into the trusty chest to find out what it's going to be. Let's take a look. Final envelope pipe. Uh-oh. Excavated treasures again. It's running it back. This is a disaster for Dog. This is the matchup that he said he did not want to play. He said, I'm totally fine as long as I don't have that matchup. But he just won that matchup. Granted, he had two of his best cards in the matchup with Shield of Minibot and Mustard yeah. Battle. But there's only a single copy of those cards. And you can see both these guys probably getting the word that it's excavated treasures and breathing a big sigh because it's all going to come down to this. And there's some pretty wacky decks again. If you're just joining us, excavated treasures basically means that these players were given a shell of 10 to 15 cards that we built for them that are quite bad. And they had to fill out the rest <laughs> of those decks with cards of their choosing without any duplicates, so they are naturally Highlander decks. Grime Street, Grifters, and Kranich was given a discard Warlock to work with. Chillbed Crusaders and Dog was given a Divine Shield Paladin Shell to work with. Yeah. And this opening hand from Kranich looks a lot better than his last one. Yeah. And Dog's looks a lot worse. He does have Shield and Minibot and Consecration against a Zoo-style deck. But that makes a it a drop. lot better. Look at the smile on Dog's face when he drew that. He could not believe it. Yep. But do you go look, for it? Look what it does. Do for, you ever go for it? Look, I, look what it does to his hand. I mean, he just wanted to play Dark Peddler and just, just play some minions, you know? Like, just draw one drop cards. And you just rip Succubus here every time. Uh, well, you know what I'm doing. I mean, I'm Nope. Shifter's Harris. The Malchazar Zim fits the exact theme of his deck, though. <laughs> but Shifter Sarah's could be anything. It could even be a Malchazar Zim. <laughs> and it is. <laughs> so it's run up at the sky saying, please give me something good. Next turn, I think you just got to go for it and hope Clutch Mother's Office is the one that gets discarded. He really wants to land this Kazakus is the thing. And I'm sure in Cranch's mind, he's thinking, if I play this Kazakus, I have a great chance to win the game. And that's typically true. Kazakus is an incredibly powerful card. Uh-oh. Oh, oh he's, he's going, going for it. Let's Stand see. them straight. Succubus. Oh. And there goes the Clutch Mother. Draws a card, and the Clutch Mother comes back as a 4-4. Keeps Kazakus as well. Perfect outcome. <laughs> And, and this is not the turn that Dog envisioned having on turn three. Not Two quite. One hero power and trade in. And the big thing is, does uh, is Kranich really feeling good? <laughs> you just want to rip the Lakari <laughs> fell out. Because Lakari fell on is sitting in the hand. When TJ gives you that look, it's I, time. Yeah, I mean, you play the Kazakas, I mean, right? He, he is agonizing over this decision too. Kazakas looks incredibly appealing, but Lakari Felhound is a 3-8. No matter what you discard, it's still going to draw you two cards with the Malchazar Zim. And there's a couple of good ones. I'm thinking Power of Overwhelming, you're okay. Oh Rips it my. again. Ooh. Well, those are two powerful discards, but they are being refunded at the moment. And, and more importantly for Cranch, this also protects the minion that's on board. So his goal with a play like this is to establish a stronger board position. Kazakus is weaker on board, He'll draw cards to replace the ones he just discarded. He'll have things to do. Yeah.
But Dog is, is he's drawing his top end. If this gets to turn seven, turn eight, and he's not too far behind on the board, he's going to turn the corner really fast with Dr. Boom following up with a Tyrion. He's got a spike rich steed to smooth out his health. I think the, that's important to note, though, is that this isn't a damage race as much for Kranich as it is for, for Dog in this spot. He's using a Consecration to simply take care of the Malchazars in, in this situation. Remember last game, when he got control of the board, he delivered a lot of damage quickly afterwards. That is not the case this game. So now Kranich is faced with quite a tough decision. It's either Kazakis and get the potion now out of the way, or play on curve and go with Darkshire Councilman plus the Tiny Knight of Evil. At every single step, Kranich has been favoring the plays that uh, the first one was to give him more information, and then the ones after have been to establish the most power on yeah. board. I forgot about the Clutch Mother as well, the 4-4. Four -four. He's okay with it being a two-mana 4-4. Four -four. He doesn't want to keep it in his hand to try and save it for Deathwing well, coin, to make it a 6-6. Six -six. This is where the coin Spike Ridge Seed uh, is quite powerful. Oh, yeah. Now, something that I have yet to experience is what happens if you put a Spike Ridge Seed on a selfless hero. <laughs> Does the Stegadon get a Divine Shield in this spot? I bet these guys are curious about that, too. They are. They look really nervous. More nervous than Dog, actually. Oh, he is going to interrupt his curve slightly to go with the Spiker Seed, just because of the power that it brings. That's a deep breath the dog just took. I think that was the, I hope this works the way I hope it works. <laughs> Interesting draw for Cranch as well. I mean, Tiny Knight of Evil now can get buffed uh, because of the discard that Darkshire Librarian would bring. He could squeeze a life tap in with that. However, he would risk discarding Kazakus. And that's not something he's willing to do right now. This is a big one. You know, th this is not a a standard matchup by any stretch of the imagination. Usually you have what kind of potion you want in your mind before you go into it, any matchup, even before the game starts. But this one, it's a Divine Shield Paladin versus a weird discard Warlock. So he actually goes with one mana. He wants to try and keep up the tempo. Three damage or summon a friendly minion. This, this is actually quite a tough choice because the three damage, of course, is extremely valuable on a one mana slot. But resummon a minion, that's gonna, that would buff the Darkshire Councilman. Fine. All right, add a random demon, summon a friendly minion. Let's see what the demon is. Oh, Flame Maple, well, it does fill out his curve. Wow, that is very good because he's already seen the Consecration from Dog as well. Remember, he used that to kill him Alcazar's in. That's quite an interesting trade, actually. And, and Dog will only be able to play one single card this turn. But Kranich weakened his own board by trading into that spiker sheet. I think he was trying to protect against Dog being able to dictate the trades on his side of the board. He's also got to, he's got to get through it eventually. I, I, I suppose you're right, and I think that's the big consideration for Kranich is that he has to be the aggressor at some point because Dog's late game does seem a little bit better. He's got more at the top end. Dr. Boom, Sunkeeper Terum, Grime Street Protector, Force Tank Max, Ragnaros, the Fire Lord, and Tyrion Forging is the top end, whereas... Kranich has Dr. Boom and Deathwing. And Dark Bargain. <laughs> there you go. Dark Bargain is a great way to kill two Boom Bots, though. <laughs> Good looking Rain Ad there. He's like, wait a second. You're telling me Kranich won four games in a row? I was ready to leave. Uh -oh. Deathwing gets discarded. But the thing that, that's really important here is that Kranich is pulling very far ahead in board presence. So Dr. Boom is coming down as a response to this. Kranich trades off to prevent any sort of buff killing his Darkshire Councilman, and suddenly a very large amount of damage is represented on board. Six plus 12, 18. Power of Wyoming makes that 22. Minions could add to that as well with the Darkshire Councilman. Dark Bargain could add to it. <laughs> With the Tiny Knight of Evil. Those boom bots are awfully scary. Oh, oh wow. my. That is, that is quite large at the moment. Yeah. And tap. Looks like Blood Queen Lanethel plus the Power Overwhelming is going to be the play here. Well, 
comp. I mean, there, there are still some other small things available to him. I mean, maybe the Ravenous Teradax. Grow its health to be able to range of Boombots. Well, he's going to evaluate the draw first with the Darkshire Library, it feels. Wise choice. And his own Dr. Boom. That's, yeah. It's time. And get ready, because Kranich is going to start beating down the door. Oh. That's a good outcome. Another oh. good outcome. Oh, those are the two best things that could have happened, I think. I don't even know if Tyrion's going to be enough for Dog. It, it is looking quite weak at the moment. The one thing about Dark Bargain, mm. correct me if you think I'm wrong, is that I don't think it's even castable if you don't have two minions on the board. I don't know. <laughs> I've never used a Dark Bargain before. And that's part of what I love about this format. <laughs> They're having to use cards that they've never used before. And it may be relevant if Dog tries to play around it, but if he just plays Tyrion this turn, then... I, I don't know if Dark Bargain is a card you actively think about when you're playing against an aggressive deck. I mean, he knows the deck list, but... He knows the deck list, yeah. Remember, they were getting certain situations wrong earlier with the Dragonfire Potion on the free oh, stack. That just wasn't in, in the deck at all. Yeah. And it looks like Dog is Not going for a, a little bit of a deviation here. It looks like he wants to take out this Darkshire Councilman while he can. And this does block around the same amount of damage as Tyrion would block anyway because of the fact that it still takes two attacks with the Divine Shield. Dark Bargain here. It is active, though. That, that's, that's, that's it. Lethal damage. The discard buffs. And that's going to do it. Granich, the lone remaining survivor for the Grime Street Grifters, is going to win five games to Chill Blades 1 and take the BlizzCon Hearthstone Invitational. And the crowd following Granich. When they were down four to one in the series, both of his teammates had to leave the stage as they were eliminated, and their lives were lost. But Kranich gets it done, coming from the second seed, having to play earlier through the dungeon run. The teammates rejoin. That's right. Look Kranich, at that smile on Raynette's face. Raynette and Patra, and there's the rest of the Hearthstone Invitational competitors coming up on stage to give some congratulations to the winners. What a run by Kranich what a comeback. at the end of it all. What a comeback. He had two lives left. He had to win five before the opponents won two. And he got the job done. Let's go ahead down on the stage with Brodan, who's waiting with our winners. Unbelievable comeback, Kranich. I think this is the part where you touch your glasses and say, that's all according to the plan, right? Yeah, well, I, um... Yeah, it's, it, it was just, it was just, yeah, yeah old plan, yeah, sure. There you go. Kranich, I want to ask you, are you aware that you took all six games for Grime Street Grifters for that series to win the Invitational? Yeah, it was like, just won like six games and actually I just, I, I, I just couldn't win any game yesterday. So I just got carried by my teammates, so probably yeah, I just did the right thing today. Raynan, I want to say, uh, I, I want to go down memory lane. Before the series started, you said something along the lines that Kranich was along for the ride, and that you and Patra were just carrying Kranich to the finals. Would you like to revisit that statement at all? No, no, I think, uh, I really think it was our moral support that, that got us this win from the, from the crowd. But. <laughs> No, Kranich killed it. That was amazing. He played perfectly, and uh, yeah, there aren't many players that could have won from that kind of position, so props to him. All right, Pastor, wrap us up strong. What does this mean, win mean to you specifically in front of all these people who are watching and laughing and, and cheering for your team here? It's been absolutely amazing to play in front of you guys. Um, without your energy, I don't think Kranich would be able to do this. So thank you guys so much. Well said, Brian Kibler. Please hand our finalists and winners the medals as they are the champions. I also take this time to welcome to the stage Matt Weibel from the Blizzard Esports team and Team 5. Please present the trophy 
for our champions, the Grime Street Grifters. Final boss, Cranich. I mean, that was incredible. Uh, I definitely feel like uh, this was the best South Korea versus USA game that took place at BlizzCon, hands down. I've been here all weekend, so I don't really know. Uh, but on behalf of Blizzard Entertainment, I want to thank all of our competitors and especially congratulate Cranich, Raynet, and Patra for their amazing win. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, your champions, the Grime Street Grifters. <laughs> Wonderful weekend, but we are not done just yet. The Hearthstone Invitational may be over, but in just a few minutes, we will wrap up the Hearthstone stage at BlizzCon 2017 with our Tan vs. Time room. Once again, a round of applause for our champions, the Grime Street Grifters. We'll see you guys in a few minutes.